Kevin, how you doing? How's that? That sounds alright, that's up high enough. Hope you guys tell me it's not high enough. Here am I, Kevin? Good morning, happy Sabbath, and welcome to another wonderful week where we will have an in-depth, exhilarating study of the Word of God here on Lagos University Sabbath School. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And oh, I am so excited this morning. I say that every morning, but I'm really excited about being here with you this morning here on Lagos University Sabbath School. So folks, we sure do hope that you are ready. We hope that you have done two things already. We hope that you've invited the Holy Spirit to be a part of your Sabbath, to be right there with you, for he has promised that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst. And if you were there by yourself, you're really not. If you've already invited God to be present with you, he is there with you and you are not alone. So folks, I hope that you've done that. And then I hope that you have done already is called a friend and told them to join in with you. So go ahead. I'm doing it early. I'm doing it very early this time. I want you to press that like, press that share, and press that subscribe button. Why? because we want the gospel of Jesus Christ to go around the world. And you help us to do that every time you do those three things. So whatever platform you are on, go ahead and do that for us. We want it done early in the program because we don't want people to miss out on anything, not on the song service, not on the prayer, and definitely not out on the uh, lesson study discussion. So we don't want you to miss a bit of it but we want you to help us to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out around the world and invite a friend. Or you can even pick up that phone and give them a quick call and tell them to join in. We are now going to go into our song service. So I sure do hope that you have your hymnals ready, whether you have the hard copy or whether you have it on your phone, or you can sure enough join us because the words will be on the screen. So tune up your voices, loud let them ring. Jesus is coming again. And so this morning, to take us into our song service is Elder Eugene Richardson and Elder Corville Hilton. Join them and ring out your voices to the King of Kings. 
Elder Richardson, Elder Hilton, take it away. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow without any fear at all. Number 526, because he lives.
Elder Richardson, Elder Hilton, thank you so much for your ministry in song this morning. Folks, I sure do hope you sang along and your heart was made glad. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. I hope that as you sang that with um, Elder Richardson, that you felt your burdens lifting. I sure did. Oh my gosh, he sang with such life and such fervor. It lets you know the experience in which one has with Jesus, knowing that your burdens are lifted at Calvary. And because he lives, <laughs> because he lives, we can face tomorrow knowing that he has taken care of everything. Oh my gosh, I was made glad. I sure do hope you were, folks. I sure do hope that you were. We have a program for you this morning. I cannot wait for us to get into our lesson study discussion. And so with that, I sure do hope that you have secured yourself a copy of your Sabbath School Quarterly. And it is entitled, For This Quarter, In These Last Days, The Message of Hebrews. That is what our lesson title is called for this quarter. We are in week two. So I would so, sure do hope that you have secured your copy. Now, you can get your copy by reaching out to your Sabbath school superintendent or your Sabbath school teacher. You can also secure a copy at the Adventist Book Center. And if you cannot get to any one of those, do not be dismayed. There are other ways in which you can obtain a copy. You can go on to Sabbath School Net and you can download a hard copy right there. Or you can go on to the Google Play or the Apple iStore and you can get an app for your phone. So folks, there is no reason for you not to be a part of the lesson discussion. Now, here's what we want you to do. Study. Every day, study. Be a part of the discussion so that when you come and you're able to join in from wherever you are, we want to hear from you. So in the chat, I want you to share what you have learned through this, this uh, week's lesson. So please let us know how these lessons are blessing you. They are timely. I, I tell you every time, we, we, we talk about it every time the lesson comes out. These are written well in advance, but they are for today. Why? Because the Bible is relevant for today. So secure your copy so that you can join in in the lesson study discussion. And so we're going to go over to our panel, and we're going to meet our panel for this week. Good morning, gentlemen. How are you this morning? Good morning. Doing pretty well. Doing well this morning? Relax. Well, good. Well, Elder, we want to say um, our prayers are with you and your family. And so we thank you. We do not take it for granted that you are here with us this morning, even during your time. You. So we want to say thank you for being committed to being here and to be able to share. So whatever God has on your heart, is laid on your heart this week, we are eager and ready to receive it. Elder Fox, it is good to see you this morning. Thank you. And Deacon Finn, good morning. How good are you doing this good morning? Good morning, morning. I'm doing good. And about you? I'm doing well this morning. I've, I've had a good week. I came off a of vacation. I'm, I'm back to work. I'm, I'm back at the grind. Um, it was a good week, so I am really grateful and Amen. thankful for the rest, but I'm also grateful and thankful to get back out there and to do what I enjoy doing most, Amen. and Amen. that's the work that I do with our young people. So I'm really ready for today's yeah. lesson study. What is it, the, the one thing, because I, I, I don't want you to give away too much, because I, I, I know this set, lesson study is going to get really, really interesting. What is the one thing that I think that you can um, share with our, our viewing audience and, and our congregation here who is um, joining us in the uh, sanctuary about this week's lesson that you want us to really know about what God is saying through his lesson this week? I think one thing that stood out to me that um, was actually relevant, um, kind of given my week, was <laughs> that uh, no matter what we go through, in this life, uh, Jesus has been through as well. Um, you know, 
he has he's not you know on touch with the feelings of our infirmities, so he knows what we've been through. And if we put our faith and trust in him, he can give us the power to get through what we go through as well. So that's one of the things that kind of stood out for me. It's all about it's all about Jesus. Amen. 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 Yes, and for me actually, I um, I think about what we're experiencing now, and you know, people need a champion. And one of the lessons actually points out that Jesus is the champion. No matter what we're going through in this life right now, Jesus will reign supreme in the end. And it always lets me think about movies. Like there is always a, a figure in a movie that is a champion and he reigns. But there's going to be a champion above that champion. That's what I got from the lesson this week. Amen, amen. So folks, put one word or phrase of what you got out of this week's lesson study discussion. And so as we head into our lesson study for this week, lesson number two, the message of Hebrews. I sure do hope that there was something in there that touched your heart, that there was something in this lesson that you were able to take with you this week and be able to share with someone else. So folks, we are going to also have a treat for you this morning. Our lower division Sabbath school, our children are being promoted from one class to the next and they are excited that they get an opportunity to move up in their Sabbath school classes. And so we will finish our program right at 1030 this morning because we want our children to be able to come up and to have their promotion exercise. And so we want you to stay around with us and be a part of our children being promoted. So our lower division will come up and be a part of the end of our Sabbath school discussion today. We will have our opening prayer by Elder, sorry, by Elder Allen Fox. Let us call for prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, as Sister Chanel mentioned, these lessons were uh, written in advance, but we know that there is a word today for us, Lord. So we just ask that you would come into this space. We ask that you would just be with those that are watching uh, via YouTube or, or the other channels. And we just ask that you would just touch our hearts, Lord. There is a word and a message in it for us today. So we ask as we share, um, touch our lips, help us to be clear. And we just ask that you would also bless those that are um, receiving this message, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Enjoy your lesson study discussion today. Which one is mine? been church a long time ago as you watch us from all over the world we're just happy to bring you this sabbath school edition of lagos university we pray that today your hearts are blessed it's good gentlemen to be here in the house of the living god uh, we are missing one member one member he got quarantined you know this is the times we live in but we miss him and so you can send your love if you would uh to elder smith man just write him tell him how much you miss him you know what I'm saying? I heard, I heard, I heard through the grapevine uh, that, that, that he's, you know, been home trying to cook. You know, this is what I heard. I heard, I heard he's been trying to cook. But indeed, uh, we want to send our love towards him, and we are thankful for the two men, uh, one a deacon, one an elder, that have stood in the gap here, and they are ready to get on with this lesson. 
We have to move quickly today because we will end, as our superintendent shared, at 10.30, so we can allow for the promotion, for promotion of our little kids to come up into higher levels, mm -hmm. all right? But hey, at this time, man, we want to get right in, gentlemen, and I want to go ahead and just open us up with a quick icebreaker. Here's how it goes. On this day, on this day, on this day, January the 8th, 1835, mm. the U.S. or United States national debt was zero for the only day in U.S. history. Today, the debt toll stands at over 29 trillion and counting. That's over 89,000 per citizen in the United States of America. That's everybody that's alive, that's a citizen over there. In addition to that, it's over 237,000 per taxpayer. So you, know, you got a bunch of kids that are in the workforce yet, you got some elderly that are not in the workforce, but amongst the taxpayers, if they were going to pay that debt, every single taxpayer would have to pay $237,000 to get America out of debt. Gentlemen, I can think of another day when the world's debt went to zero. It happened on a hill far away. Can you share with the audience what they can do to have their debt wiped clean. Come on, I'm gonna start with Elder Fox, man. Talk to me. Well, uh, there's a hymn that actually comes to mind um, and you actually uh, asked us that question. Um, and it goes something like this. It says, Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Yes. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it white as snow. Yes. So simply give our all to Jesus. I love it, I love it, I love it. Talk to me, talk to me, Deacon Finn. Yeah, currently I'm, I'm feeling debt free already. You know? Well. <laughs> I'm feeling debt free already. And actually that feeling brings a feeling of a clean slate. You're mm. walking on a clean slate, like you're walking into a new life. And imagine someone did that first. But I just want to point out like an emergency scripture that a, that a person could use. 119, 1 John 1. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, mm. he is faithful and just mm. to, to forgive us of our sins and to mm. cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Some basic steps. Steps to Christ is another one. The first, the first four chapters, God's love for man, we have to know who's going to clear the debt. The next chapter, the sinner's need for Christ. The next chapter of that, repentance. A repentance just like David, not like Esau. A true sorrowful repentance and the last one confession if we do all these four steps these four basic steps we are on a path to clearing our debt in Christ. you know it's very mm. interesting gentlemen it's very interesting because when we look at uh, even the story of the paralytic it's very interesting because Jesus says to him thy sins be forgiven For you. that's the language that he uses What's interesting is that that word that's used or translated forgive, when you look at it in the Greek, look at it uh, even, among, even with the syntax of it, that in essence, uh, Jesus is using a word that has several different meanings. He's using a word that has several different meanings. Now here's what's interesting. One of, the, one of the meanings is that word forgive means to divorce. It means to forsake. Mm. It means to abandon. Mm. But another meaning is the cancellation of debt. Mm. Now, understanding it proper in its proper context, what he actually says to the paralytic is that I have caused mm. thy sins to abandon thee. Mm. <laughs> uh, 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 the, if you would, I have caused, in, caused thy sins to forsake thee. <laughs> the debt you owe on your sins has been paid in okay. full. Mm -hmm. Arise. Take up your bed and walk. Oh, friends, those of you that are watching, if you wish uh, to be debt free, uh, if you wish to be cleansed by the blood of the man we call Jesus Christ, we invite you to give your heart to him today, and you can actually start off today debt free. Huh? You can actually wipe that slate clean by simply getting on your knees and asking Jesus 
to wash away your sins. Listen, I want to go ahead and jump right in because we are pressed for time today. I want to get into Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 1. Now, we're going to go from the New Revised Standard Version, the King James Version, and the New Living Translation. I'm very happy about you know, this situation, because I don't feel like we're unprepared for this moment, Deacon Finn. I don't think we're unprepared. Uh, when I look at last week, and I look at how many times uh, Elder Fox read Elder Smith's text, I'm already, I already, I'm feeling totally confident that he's going to read those texts well today. But come on, let's go to Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 1. What does the okay, Bible say fine. in the New Revised Standard Version? So it reads, now the main point in what we are saying is this. We have such a high priest, one who is seated at the right hand of the throne of majesty in the heavens. And the King James Version reads, Now of the things which we have spoken, this is the Son. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. Mm. And then the New Living Translation says, here is the main point. Mm. We have a high priest who sat down in the place of yes. honor yes. beside the throne of the majestic God in heaven. We have a high priest, yeah. man. And it says yeah. that is the main point. Yeah. That is the main point. You know, every time I, I, I listen to this or hear about Jesus sitting down on the right hand of the Father, and we remember the fact uh, that in essence, if you would, it's not two seats up there. It's one of the things we want to make it very clear. Mm -hmm. There are not two seats to the throne. It's not like the Father's in one seat and the Son is in another, but rather they share, mm -hmm. if you would, a seat. They share, if you would, a couch. Uh, they are both seated on uh, the throne. Uh, Jesus has all power uh, in his hands. Now it's interesting because when we look at this text, we're finding that the main point is that we have such a high priest. And when we think about him sitting on the right hand of the Father, immediately my, my mind always goes uh, to Stephen. And when Stephen was being stoned, mm -hmm. He was given x-ray vision out of Fox. He was allowed to see right into heaven from earth. And uh, to the extent that he was able to clearly identify Jesus who wasn't seated but was standing on the right hand of the Father. See, when God's people are, are in trouble, Jesus can't keep still, man. He can't stay seated. He has to get up. He has to rise up, man, and stand for his people. It's amazing because when we look at the lesson, if we are God's people, then why are we suffering so much? Jesus prays for us. He perfects us. He imparts his righteousness that a part of us, a part of us, him, would make it to heaven. Hmm. Uh, and he used to understand that nothing of us will go to heaven. We understand, as we talked about before, only that character will make it to heaven. Hmm. which is a little piece, if you would, of heaven that Jesus has inserted into us that can go back to heaven when he comes. It's amazing because several chapters of Hebrews have been devoted to discussing the work of Christ as our high priest. Now we come to this succinct summary. Christ serves his people before God by offering a sacrifice for sin. Christ had sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. This repeats a point already established in chapter 1, verse 3. But now with a clear application to the role of Christ as high priest. The idea that Christ was seated comes from Psalm 110, verse 1. The act of sitting down, listen to me, the act of sitting down suggested that Jesus' task was done. Mm. Mm. He's sitting down because his work is done. He had finished his job. By contrast, the priest of Aaron's line always stood in God's presence without sitting. Their act of standing suggested that the task was incomplete. Jesus had accomplished the work whose completion the priests could only anticipate. Majesty is a reverent reference to God the Father. The words show that Christ had assumed a position of dignity, power, and excellence as a result of his faithful work. It's amazing because in this life, we must meet fiery trials and make costly sacrifices. 
but the peace of Christ is the reward. There has been so little self-denial, so little suffering for Christ's sake that, that the cross is almost entirely forgotten. We must be partakers with Christ of his sufferings if we would sit down in triumph with him on his throne. So long as we choose the easy path of self-indulgence and are frightened at self-denial, our faith will never become firm and we cannot know the peace of Jesus for the joy that comes through conscious sorry, nor the joy that comes through conscious victory. Here's the thing. I want to go ahead and jump right in, Nyron. I want to get right into Jesus is our king. We got some powerful, very powerful moments that we need to get into in this lesson. I want to go first to John chapter 12 and verse 31. John the 12th chapter and verse 31. Let's go to the New International Version, King James, and then the New Living Translation. What does the Bible say? Right. It reads, now is the time for judgment of on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. Mm. King James Version reads, Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Mm. And the New Living Translation reads, The time for judging this world has come when Satan, the ruler of this world, will be cast out. Now I think it's important here before we get into this diron to first acknowledge are uh, the fact that Jesus is saying these words while he's alive on earth. Mm. This is very significant that we do not confuse, uh, if you would, the two separate kicking outs. Right. Ha, ha. So in essence, of course, when the devil led one third of the angelic host against the God of heaven, they were kicked out, right? Mm. He came down here, he tried to go tempt all the other worlds, and then he ends up on earth and is able to get Adam and Eve to sin. Now, it's interesting because uh, they were kicked out at this time. But when we look at the story, and I know you'll touch on this a little bit, but when we look at the story of Job, we find that he still had access. Now, I'm going to let you deal with that, but I want to say this that when we look at Revelation chapter 12, we find that he is kicked out once and for all. So now he can never go back. And the reason he could come in, into heaven all that time was because he was the prince of this world because he took dominion from Adam when he got Adam to sin. Now, it's interesting. Jesus calls him the prince of this world. He recognizes him as such. And you need to understand, the devil made the mistake in Job's story, and I'll stay there because I know you're not really going there, but, but, but he made the mistake in Job's story of showing up to heaven empty-handed. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So in essence, you have all the leaders of all the different worlds that are showing up. And they're bringing offerings, they're bringing the faithful, they're bringing people that are serving God, they're bringing examples of those who have served the Lord with faithfulness. That's what they're doing. And the devil shows up empty-handed, as if to suggest that everybody on earth was serving him and there was nobody serving God. So in that moment, you know, God asked him a question. <laughs> Have you considered my servant Job, man? <laughs> One that runs, well, he actually sheweth evil. He runs away from evil. Uh, he wants nothing to do with evil. And it's amazing because all the devil can say is that the only reason he serves you is because you gave him a great, you know, protection plan. You gave him a great health benefits. You, you protect him and you do all these kinds of stuff. And in that moment, we need to understand that the devil is actually in heaven having this conversation with God. But when Jesus won the battle at the cross, the devil was kicked out of heaven once and for all. And Revelation 12 says they had a big party in heaven when he got kicked out. 
They said, you ain't got to deal with this guy no more. He can't walk up and down heaven accusing us. Because you know the devil was calling them out. The other two-thirds were getting called out. A bunch of Uncle Toms, a bunch of sellouts. You should have rolled with us the whole nine yards. He is taunting them and he's teasing them. He's saying all kinds of stuff. But now he can't come in there anymore. He's kicked out. But the message of warning comes to us. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil is now coming down here. And he is extremely upset. upset. Talk to us, Nairon. Talk to us about Jesus is our king. Well, um... What this lesson brought out to me was that Adam was given dominion over this world. And of course, he lost it when he, he fell into sin. And um, now, the, the, the dominion was given over to the devil. And of course, we could see that in, in Job 1, verse 6, as Pastor was stating. And I'll read it really quickly, really quickly. Job 1, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Who? The sons of God. So they were there in the courts of heaven now, and Satan was a representative of, of the earth. And how could that be? Because Adam gave over dominion to the devil. Right? So I just want to jump ahead. Christ now, he came from the promise in Genesis 3, verse 15, that he was going to bruise the head of the serpent, mm. he came now and regained, reclaimed, I should say, reclaimed dominion of this world when he won that victory on the hill of Calvary. But I just want to point out some things about a king, what a king in the medieval times were, were like. A king upholds the law. A king establishes order and peace. A king fights for his people. A king protects the poor. A king also should rule fear. And of course, a king opposed the law. Did, did God come to destroy the laws and the prophets? No, he didn't. He establishes order and peace. He's a prince of peace. And also, the, a king fights for his people. And in um, Revelation, he says, and there was, a, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Who is the dragon, of course? The devil. The great dragon was cast out, as Pastor is saying. This is, a second, this is the second time he was cast out. So tell me now, who is king? If he was cast out, who is king? A king also protects the poor. In Job 5, verse 15 and 16, it says, But he saved the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. So the poor had hope. The last one, a king should rule justly. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. Who sits on the throne? Of course, it's Jesus Christ, man. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Psalm 89, verse 14. These are just scriptures I'm giving you to prove that Jesus is the perfect king. So I thank King Jesus for his incarnation which led to his inauguration, which proves hope for our reconciliation, Come on, preacher. which is now the hope of our salvation. Come on, man. He is king. <laughs> he is king. He yes, is king. yes, yes. He is the king. Jesus is king. Thanks so much, man, for helping us with that. I think it's important to understand we are now standing on the threshold of great and solemn events. Our crisis is before us, such as the world has never witnessed. And sweetly to us, as to the first disciples, comes the assurance that God's kingdom, God's kingdom ruleth over all. The program of coming events is in the hands of our maker. The majesty of heaven has the destiny of nations as well as the concerns of his church in his own charge. The divine instructor is saying to every agent in the accomplishment of his plans, as he said to Cyrus, I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. Come on, man. I want to jump into Monday's lesson. Jesus is our mediator. Jesus is our mediator. And hopefully, you know, this is, this is Elder Smith's section. Hopefully by now, he at least 
got the tofu eggs cooked by now. I, I, don't, I don't know what progress is making this morning, but hopefully he got the tofu eggs made by now. Let's get into Exodus chapter 4, verses 22 and 23. Let's go to uh, the English Standard Version, uh, the New uh, Century Version, and then to the American Standard Version. What does the Bible say? 22 and 23 reads, Then you shall say to Pharaoh, thus says the Lord, that Israel is my first, firstborn son. Mm -hmm. And I say to you, let my son go that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your firstborn son. The uh, NCV reads, then say to the king, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn son. I told you to let my son go so he may worship me, but you refuse to let Israel go, so I will kill your firstborn son. And the American Standard Version reads, And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus said Jehovah, Israel is my, first, is my son, my firstborn, and I have said unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And thou hast refused to let him go, Behold, I will slay thy son, thy firstborn. It's very interesting. It's very interesting, Elder Fox, Deacon Finn. It's very interesting because these words are actually the words that are given to Moses to speak to Pharaoh before, listen to me, before the very first plague was dropped. Mm -hmm. Let him go. Yeah. Israel's my firstborn son. Let him go. They can come worship me or I will kill your firstborn son. It's interesting, it's interesting that in essence, God actually shows Pharaoh with nine warning plagues what he can do and waits until the 10th plague to actually take his firstborn mm -hmm. son. It's very interesting because that's how merciful, because sometimes we think, I don't know how to put it, but sometimes we think God's only merciful to Christians. No, no, no. God loves everybody. Sometimes we have to put that, you know, just in our heads that God loves people in the church and he loves people outside of the church. And even though you may be so-called, as we would call a heathen or a non-believer, and you're out there doing stuff against God's will, he still loves you and is still patient and kind and long-suffering. He tells them, let go of my son. Israel is my firstborn son. It's amazing because the Bible uh, helps us to understand this more clearly. And here's the thing. The good news is that God sent his son to be born as the son of David. And he has been, if you would, perfectly faithful. Now in Revelation, the Bible says that Jesus is, is if you would, the root and the offspring of David. Mm -hmm. Lord help us. Uh, 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 he's, 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 he's a descendant of David. Mm -hmm. While at the same time, he formed David when David was in his mother's womb. Right. Uh, this is the God that we serve. Now, it's interesting. Uh, when God blesses the king, all his people share in the benefits. This is why Jesus is the mediator of God's blessing to us. He is the mediator in that he is the channel through whom God's blessings flow. Our ultimate hope of salvation is found only in Jesus and what he has done for us. Here's what it says in the great controversy. It says the intercession of Christ in man's behalf in the sanctuary above is an essential is as essential to the plan of salvation as was his death upon the cross. Mm. By his death he began that work which after his resurrection, he ascended to complete in heaven. Mm -hmm. You know, I paused there last, I'm gonna pause there again. That in essence, by his death, he began that work, which after his resurrection, he ascended to complete in heaven. Uh, I think they missed it too. I'm going to say it one more time. That, that, that in essence, by his death, he began that work, which after his resurrection, he ascended to complete in heaven. Right. 
which takes me immediately back to the cross uh, because on the cross, Jesus said, it is finished. Oh, come on, man. Uh, yet he's still completing the work. He's still making it happen. Uh, and we often talk about this, that the God we serve dwells in the past, the present, and the future simultaneously. It's interesting because it goes on here to say, we must by faith enter within the veil, whether the forerunner is for us entered. There the light from the cross of Calvary is reflected. There we may gain a clearer insight into the mysteries of redemption. The salvation of man is accomplished at an infinite expense to heaven. The sacrifice made is equal to the broadest demands of the broken law of God. Jesus has opened the way to the Father's throne, and through his mediation, the sincere desire of all who come to him in faith may be presented before God. That's Great Controversy, page 489. Jesus is the forerunner. He's in the most holy place right now. <laughs> and we have a human that's not just in the most holy place that can sit right next to God, but he's also there interceding on our behalf. Amen. Talk to me, Deacon Finn. Yeah, when, um, when I think about this lesson too, it actually points me to the fact that the Jews, the Jews thought they, they knew so much, but they didn't, knew, they didn't know anything. Mm. You know, um, in, in John 5, verse 39, it says, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. For, and they are they which testify of me. They miss that whole part about it, that he is actually coming. They only studied the word of God and thought that they had eternal life. But they didn't know that the actual mediator was going to come to free them. Even John was pointing it out to them. Behold the Lamb of God there who mm. take it away the sins of the world. He is the one. He is the perfect mediator. And he's going to resume that work in the heavenly courts. Yes. Yeah, I just want to add. Um, so um, I was, I was uh, intrigued about the different covenants and how they contrast the Mosaic covenant with the Davidic covenant. Um, and just, you know, just for, for reference, you know, the Mosaic Covenant required the faithfulness of all Israel mm. to receive uh, God's protection and yes, blessing. Sir. And that's why you saw when someone you know, did something wrong, they were punished, they were even killed at, in, in some instance. But when uh, you know, God established the Davidic Covenant, mm. um, he secured his covenantal blessings upon Israel through the faithfulness of one person. Yes. And, that's, and the, uh, that, that will be in, in the, king, the uh, Davidic king. And so again, you see in the Bible where you have a king, they were faithful and Israel prospered. They were unfaithful and Israel, you know, um, they, were, they were cursed. Um, but, you know, there is, and we're gonna get, get into it later on in the lesson, but then Jesus comes as the son of David and he creates a new covenant so that if we, and I was gonna actually mention it in, in Sunday's lesson, because in Sunday's lesson it talks about, you know, um, Jesus being the ruler of the world after he defeated, but his, he rules over those who accept him. Yes. Right. So. It's only when we accept Jesus right. as our king that we have these blessings and are be, um, able to um, receive the blessings that God has in store for us. Absolutely, and that in essence, we enter into what we call spiritual Israel mm -hmm. because we know that Israel, that the Jews, they are no longer God's chosen people, but rather now, God's chosen people are those who serve him and obey his commandments. Now, to be quite honest with you, that was actually always the case. Mm -hmm. That in essence, even during the time of Israel, you were truly, uh, if you would, the descendants, or if you would, the followers of that great lineage, if you kept the commandments. Right. If you did not, you were actually not one of them. And you right. talked about it being actually cast out. I love the point you brought up that in essence, that first one was dependent on everybody. Yep. Mm -hmm. This one, in other words, dependent upon the faithfulness of everybody. everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now it's dependent upon the faithfulness of the one who's never failed. Amen. It's all faithfulness by the man we call Jesus Christ. I love that. I love that point you brought up. Here's the thing. Jesus is our champion. He's our king. He's our mediator. Now we want to get into Jesus as our champion. 
I want to just look at two, verse, uh, two, two versions, if you would, of 1 Samuel chapter 8, verses 19 and 20. I want to go to the New King James Version and then the New Living Translation. What does the Bible say, if you would, in 1 Samuel 8, 19 and 20? So in the New King James Version, it reads, Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel, and they said, No, but we will have a king over us, that we also may be like all the nations, and that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Very interesting. Very interesting. Why you find that next one is very interesting because in essence, in essence, out of Fox, they're sitting there saying that we really don't want you, God, Come on now. God had led them through the wilderness. God was there in a pillar of fire and a, pillar and a cloud, if you would, by day. He protected them and he kept them warm. He provided for them. He was a great leader to them and a marvelous king. Yet they wanted a king that they could see. Come on, talk to us. Give me the uh, other version right there, the New Living Translation. What does it say? But the people refused to listen to Samuel's warning. Even so, we still want a king, they said. We want to be like the nations around us. Our king will judge us and lead us into battle. It's a problem. It's a problem, Elder Fox, when all we want to do is be like everybody Mercy. else. Mercy. <laughs> Talk to us about Jesus as our champion. So, what, champion, Jesus as our champion. What is a champion? I think we all know what a champion is. Mm -hmm. um, I was pretty, um, the, these definitions that I found were pretty uh, um, insightful. And one of them is a person who has, who has defeated or surpassed all rivals in a competition. Mm. Uh, the second one was a person who fights or argues for a, a cause or on behalf of someone else. Mm. So when I was thinking about champion, as you guys know, I'm into sports. And one of the things that kind of came to me was, um, yeah, I, I like basketball. It's like, you know, I like watching basketball. And as a kid, I remember um, one of the most exciting times for me was when, you know, there's a, there's, there's a game, there's a very close game, and it comes, at, you know, comes to the end of the game, and you have, you know, five individuals on each team, but there is only one person that, you know, will get the ball. So, for example, you know, my favorite player was Michael Jordan. Sure. So, end of the game, you know, uh, the, the uh, time is running out, and they'll give the ball to Michael Jordan, and everybody would just back away. Get out the way. <laughs> just get out the way and let him do what he does. And the thing is, you know, um, those individuals, they trusted that he would do what he normally does, oh, which right. is, you know, um, win the game. But also, when he did win the game, they also benefited from it. Yes. Right? So they yes. trusted and they benefited. I love it. And so we can, we can look at this as far as Jesus as our champion and, and look at a spiritual, um, you know, look at this at a, in a spiritual way. Mm. Uh, because, you know, Israel, they had God as their champion. But as yes. we just read, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to just read it again. They refused to listen to Samuel. They said, no, we want a king over us. They wanted to be like other nations. That's what they said. Then we will be like other nations with a king to lead us and to go out before us and fight our bas battles. Mm. Now, now, this is a problem, right? They, they wanted to be like other nations. That was a problem. You know, what happened to them being a peculiar people? You know, we see in Deuteronomy 14, verses 2, where it says, for you are a holy people to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be a people for himself, a special treasure above all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Um, you know, so what, what, what happened to them being this nation that's set aside? And, and my question to us today, because we have to make these things relevant, you know, do, do we have the same problem today? Do we prefer you know, man's solutions over God's solutions? Do, do we trust in um, the government to solve our problems? Uh, you know, um, uh. but we have to realize and understand and read God's word because it tells us in Ephesians 6 verse 12 that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. And so this is why our, our champion, whoever it is, needs to be someone who not only understands what we are going through, mm. but also has the power to help us overcome. Yes. And I'm just going to turn to Hebrews 2, okay. verses 14 and 16, because it kind of gives us um, an insight into who this person should be, who, who, should who be. this person, who this champion should be. Um, because it talks, and it says, 
in as much, actually I'm going to read it in a different version. Uh, I'm going to read it in NIV. And it says, since the children have flesh and blood, he, talking about Jesus, mm -hmm. too has shared in, this, in their humanity the, so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. Mm -hmm. For surely it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. So we see that God has sent Jesus Christ to be our champion, and I hope that's the case for all of us that it's in this room and those that are listening online. You know, it's very interesting um, when you pointed out the fact that they wanted a king that would fight their battles right. for them, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting, right, that, you know, Samuel comes onto the scene and Samuel, you know, he's the guy that facilitated the transition from the period of the judges to the period of the kings, right? Mm -hmm. And what's interesting is, is that, you know, when they choose the first king, man, he's chosen, he's head and shoulders above everybody, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And they wanted a king who would fight for him. And Saul didn't want to fight anybody, mm. <laughs> right? In essence, when it was time to fight, yeah, yeah. he's over there That's trembling wrong. and shaking yeah. and scared stiff. Uh, the God we serve is never afraid. And I love the fact, and I love the analogy, that even in these last days, as we prepare for this great and final conflict, that in essence, when the game is on the line, Elder Fox, we all need to get out the way. Yeah. <laughs> Give the ball to Jesus yeah, Christ, awesome. man, yeah. and he will win it for us, and we will all benefit Amen. because of it. Yeah? It's a beautiful thing. Talk to me, Deacon. The, um, the, the lesson, the, the story of Elijah and the Syrians actually comes to mind also where, you know, the, the Elijah was praying, and that's also an important um, aspect of our life that should be an important aspect of our lives right now in these times and when he prayed he he showed the the young man that listen we have a ton of angels just turn around and open your eyes mm -hmm. remember it was only one third of the angels that were thrown out and two thirds are on the good side so when when elijah told him to turn around and look at the Syrian army, and then he looked behind the Syrian army, he saw tons of angels. So in the last days, what are we gonna worry about when we know that we have two thirds of the angels on our side, and the champion Jesus Christ will be in the front leading the army. I love it, I love Dimitri. it, man, I love Dimitri. it. I love it, let's go ahead and jump right into Wednesday's lesson. We have dealt with uh, some very significant uh, titles, Jesus as our king, Jesus as our mediator, our champion, and today uh, for, for Wednesday's lesson, we want to get into Jesus is our high priest. Jesus is our high priest. Come on, let's take a look at Hebrews chapter 5, verses 1 through 4. We're just going to read it from one version, the English Standard Version. Hebrews 5, verses 1 through 4. What does the Bible yeah, say? American Standard Version, doesn't it? Uh, so the American Standard Version... Go ahead. Is that fine? Go ahead. Uh, it says, For every high priest being taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sin, who can bear gently with the ignorant and erring, for that he himself also compassed with infirmity, and by reason thereof is bound. As for the people, so also himself to offer sins. And no man taketh the honor unto himself, but when he is called of God, even as he was Aaron. Help us, if you would, help us understand, uh, Deacon Finn, Jesus is our high priest. Our high priest. He's our, definitely our high priest. When I think about it, um, the, along the, the, the earthly sanctuary, there were earthly priests, but they had a a simple part to play. I, I must say, they had a simple part to play. They didn't have to, they didn't go through whatever Christ did. Whilst on the other side, Christ is no, Christ had to play the worst part of the script. He had to die for their sins. The, the earthly priests, they killed it. They didn't have to do nothing. So Christ is that perfect high priest. But it even doesn't finish there. Christ is amongst the candlesticks in the heavenly sanctuary right now as our high priest, moving from each one, making sure each one of them have enough light or enough 
oil in them for them to be burning with the Holy Spirit for us to even be functioning in, in a time such as this. So it goes to the point that we also have a role to play in these, in these closing scenes of earth, in, in the closing scenes of Christ's earthly ministry, that we need to be a light amongst the people around us, wherever we are, in our jobs, wherever we are, even if we go to ABC, anywhere that we go, even in, in the streets, we should be a witness to everybody right now, just as though Christ is a, is a heavenly high priest. The nail, scar, the nail scars we cause, the piercing in his side that we cause, and not to forget the stripes across his back, but I praise God that he stood in the gap for me. So I can say by his stripes, we are healed. Hebrews 4 verse 15 says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. So that means we have a high priest. That's what the scripture is saying. But was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. So there is a human on the throne. Right now, the high priest, he is human because he came in earthly, Mm -hmm. in a a human flesh to prove to us that we can overcome whatever we are going through in this life. There is a human on the throne and he's he's our heavenly high priest. I love how you uh, dealt with the fact that in essence, it's important for us to let our light shine. Uh, Look at uh, Acts of the Apostles, page 586. Here's what it says. It says, Christ is spoken of as walking in the midst of the golden candlesticks. Thus is symbolized his relation to the churches. He is in constant communication with his people. He knows their true state. He observes their order, their piety, their devotion. Although he is high priest and mediator in the sanctuary above, yet he is represented as walking up and down in the midst of his churches on the earth. With untiring wakefulness and unremitting vigilance, he watches to see whether the light of any of his sentinels is burning dim or going out. I love that, that Jesus walks inside of every church and he's checking to see whether or not any of his sentinels is burning dim or going out. If the candlesticks were left to mere human care, the flickering flame would languish and die. But he is the true watchman in the Lord's house, the true warden of the temple's courts. He's, his continued care and sustaining grace are the source of light and life, or life and light. Come on, let's get into Thursday's lesson, if you would. Jesus mediates a better covenant. We're gonna take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17, I'm going to go to the King James Version, the New Living Translation, and then God's Word. We're going to stick to the versions uh, as was printed. We're going to stick to those versions. Come on, let's get to 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. What does the Bible say? Reading from the KJV. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Yes. The New Living Translation, is that correct? This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And whoever is a believer in Christ is a new creation. The old way of living has disappeared. Mm -hmm. A new way of living has come into existence. The lesson points out that Hebrews uh, uh, 8 through 10 focuses on the work of Jesus as the mediator of a new covenant. The issue with the old covenant was simply that it was only a foreshadowing of the good things that would come. Its institutions were designed to prefigure, to illustrate the work that Jesus would do in the future. Thus the priests prefigured Christ, but they were mortal and sinners. They could not provide the perfection that Jesus did. And they ministered in a sanctuary that was a copy and shadow of the heavenly sanctuary. Mm -hmm. 
Jesus ministers in the true sanctuary and provides us access to God. The sacrifices of animals prefigure the death of Jesus as a sacrifice in our behalf. But their blood could not cleanse the conscience. Jesus' blood, however, purifies our conscience and through him, having faith in him and accepting his mediatory work in our behalf, we can approach God with boldness. I think it's important to also say and to remind everyone that although there were a whole lot of sacrifices and going a whole lot of sacrifices that happened before Jesus showed up. That there was a whole lot of goats and a whole lot of sheep and a whole lot of cattle that was, was sacrificed, if you would, to point forward to Christ and, and was sacrificed, if you would, as a symbol or, you know, to give them understanding on how Jesus would forgive uh, and wipe their slate clean, that all those animals that were killed, uh, not one of them actually caused the forgiveness of anyone's sins. It wasn't until Jesus... Jesus showed up that those sins that they had confessed all those years uh, were forgiven. And it's important to realize that as we look forward, to be pardoned in the way that Christ pardons is not only to be forgiven, but to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. The Lord says, a new heart will I give unto thee. The image of Christ is to be stamped upon the very mind and heart and soul. The apostle says, and we have the mind of Christ. Without the transforming process which can come alone through divine power, the original propensities to sin are left in the heart in all their strength to forge new chains, to impose a slavery that can never be broken by human power. I need to pause parenthetically there just for a second, that whatever issues you are dealing with in your life, you have no ability to break that on your own. Whatever situations that you have entered into in this new year, some of you have gotten up on the first day of the year last week and you said, I'm not gonna do this and I'm not gonna do that and I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do this every single day and I'm gonna do this every, understand that you have no power to change yourself. You may be able to do something for a period of time, but if you want to get to a place where you do it without fail, where you do it where you uh, in a place where you want to do it and you love to do it and you cherish doing it, if you want to be in that particular place, that requires divine power. That requires something outside of you. That requires something that you don't have and it is the man we call Jesus Christ. And we want to recommend him to you today because in this beginning of this year, in this year 2022, in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of everything that we are going through down here on earth, it seems like it's never going to end. Omicron, Delta, I mean, every time you turn around, it's, what's the next strain? What are they going to call that? Um, the truth of the matter is, is that we must get to a place where we realize that the only sure foundation, the only thing we can trust in, the only thing we can hold on to is the man we call Jesus Christ. He can change you from within. He can actually change your desires. He can actually have you getting up. You, 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 oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. On the first you said, you know what? You know what? I'm not going to eat any fried foods. I'm done with the fried foods in 2022. But unless you gave that over to the Lord, Oh man, by now, you don't have a little chicken, huh? You don't have, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, have a little french fry, you know? The truth of the matter is, is that the power does not lie in us, gentlemen. The power lies uh, in the man we call Jesus Christ. Talk to me. Yeah, I just want to add to the new covenant. Um, in Hebrews 8, verses 10, it, it says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind yes. and write them on their hearts mm. and I will be their God and they shall be my people. And you're just talking about, you know, a process of, wow, tr process of changing our um, sinful nature to uh, more of a, a Christ-like nature. And in Desire of Ages, um, it just referenced this text and it says, the cross reveals the love of God. If we do not resist, we shall be led to the foot of the cross in repentance for the sins that have crucified the Savior. Then the Spirit of God through faith produces a new life in the soul. The thoughts and desires are brought into, brought into obedience to the will of Christ. The heart, the mind are created anew in the image of him who works in us to subdue all things to himself. Then the law of God is written in the mind and the heart. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Couldn't say, talk to me, talk to me. Yeah, um, just to add to what you're saying about um, the sacrifices, how many goats yeah. and animals are sacrificed. Um, a good scripture to add to that is actually Hebrews 9, verse 13 and 14, reading from the KJV, okay? <laughs> For if the blood of bulls and of goats and of ashes and of heifers and sprinkling the, un the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge our conscience from dead works to serve, to serve the living God. And it actually, when I read this, it actually brought to mind how much we think that our works could actually save mm. us by eating healthy, by um, coming to church on Sabbath every week, reciting your, 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 um, your memory verse, all those different things. We, uh, we, you know, we could actually think that our works, just as the Jews in those times, the works will save them. And that's what Christ was telling them, that listen, those sacrifice, that sacrificial system has ended. Now you look into me. Work with me. And it also points back to the fact that the, the, the parable of the ten virgins, we could actually think that we are doing a righteous thing, mm -hmm. being a deacon, being an elder, being um, wherever on cameras, doing something that you think is righteous in the sight of God, but yet still, the quickening spirit is not within you. Mm. So at that point, when that midnight cry happens, where will your soul be? Where will your soul be at that point? Will you be considered a five foolish virgin or will you be considered a five wise virgin? And it's a five wise virgin that we should be aiming towards in these closing times, doing the work that the Holy Spirit has told you to do, not works. Works let you fall into the five Wise, absolutely, right. absolutely. Five foolish, right? Absolutely. It's interesting because we look at Hebrews uh, chapter 1. These are the verses we read every communion. And in Hebrews chapter 1, uh, verse 1, the Bible says, God who had sundry times and uh, in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, mm -hmm. whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, worlds, plural, plural, worlds, worlds yeah. Yeah. who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, <laughs> when he had by himself, by himself <laughs> purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high, being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. But listen to the power that God has, that Jesus has, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, Everything is held together by the word of Jesus Christ, who when he had done everything and had laid it all out, upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sin. Now, hold on a second. What are we saying here? That Jesus did not have any help when it came to saving us. Scripture says he did it all by himself which means, or to be a very strong rebuke to us, that he does not need our assistance mm, in right. saving us now. Mm, mm, mm. What he needs us to do is to get out the way yep. and let him be the savior by himself. Clear the court, yep. <laughs> get out the way. Out. You know, you watch, um, 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 uh, what was it, uh, The Last Dance, and, 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 and Scotty said, we know, what, what was the command? What was the instruction? Everybody was told to get out the yeah, way. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, let Jordan do what Jordan is gonna do. Yeah. Well, we need to learn to let Michael do what he's gonna do 
because there's a better Michael than Michael Jordan. Uh, it's Michael the Archangel. And one day he will stand up. And there's nobody like him. Yes, Jordan was a great player, but Jordan also missed a lot of shots. Um, Jesus has never, never missed. Michael the Archangel has never missed the buzzer beater. He's never missed it. Come on, man. Let's let's go ahead, if you would, uh, Elder Fox, and summarize for us uh, today's lesson. So I like how the lesson actually summarizes itself. It says, uh, Friday's lesson, the desert generation was the only one that saw the amazing power of God unleashed in signs and wonders in their deliverance from Egypt. But when they arrived at the border of the promised land, they were not able to trust God. They lacked faith which is the core of what God requires. In Hebrews 11, 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. And Paul says that we, like the desert nation, also are at the border of the promised land. Our privileges and responsibilities are greater. We did not hear God speak at Mount Sinai, but we have seen, or well, have we seen though? Have, have we seen, have we read scriptures? Are we, are we daily reading God's word? It says, but we have seen through scriptures a revelation of God greater than the one Mount, at Mount Zion. God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. The question is, will we have faith? Amen. Amen. We want to thank you guys for joining us today here uh, on Lagos University. We want to encourage you that for further reading, uh, we invite you to take a look uh, at a couple of books uh, written by Ellen White. Uh, one reflecting Christ in the chapter Christ sacrificed himself for us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we miss that. Christ sacrificed himself mm -hmm. for us, mm -hmm. right? That's in page 17 of that book. And also take a look at Acts of the Apostles. There's a chapter in there called Corinth. Uh, I invite you to read pages 245 and 246 for your own reading. Got a quote, man, just to close us out from the guy named Oscar Wilde. Oscar Wilde, small quote, short quote, but here's what it says. It says, gentlemen, no man, no man is rich enough to buy back his past. Mm. No man <laughs> is rich enough to buy back his past. Come on, let us close out with a word of prayer uh, at this time. Uh, Deacon Finn, pray for us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, by this lesson, dear Jesus, Lord, we could look back and say, Lord, that you are king, you are the mediator, you are the champion, and you are the high priest, and there is no better covenant than you. Father, I ask that, Lord, we continue, Lord, to, to dig deeper into your word and let it transform us from deep within. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you, friends. We are so thankful that you decided to join us today for Lagos University, this deep, exhilarating study of the Word of God. We pray that you were blessed by it, and we know that as you study your Sabbath school lesson each week, that you will continue to grow in Jesus Christ. Here at the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church, we have some other avenues that you can contact us uh, to make your experience even more rich. So for instance, we have, if you would, a prayer line uh, that you can tap into. Uh, you can see that on your screen right now, uh, where you can actually come and share your prayer requests. If by chance uh, you didn't get it in there, feel free to write your request on the chat, or uh, you can text our pr actual number here for Lagos University, uh, which is 441. 517-5810. Uh, uh, we pray that you are blessed by everything that you get here involved with. And at the same time, feel free uh, to email us any request for Bible studies, whatever you might need, at HamiltonSDA at gmail.com. That's HamiltonSDA at gmail.com. Until next week, uh, as you continue to study your lesson, know that we are avidly preparing for the next encounter we have with you so that God can take us deeper into his word. The word Lagos is a word that actually means the word. 
The Bible says in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Bible also says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against thee. That same Bible says, Order my steps in your word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. And so, as we prepare for next week, we want you to prepare as well. Make the Sabbath school lesson your daily study, so that the next time you come into this place, whether it's virtually or in person, you may be able to contribute to this great thing we call Lagos University. God bless you, friends, and have a wonderful Sabbath. Good morning and welcome again to the Hamilton Seven-Day Adventist Church. Our lower division will be having their promotions this morning. So they have come up to join us and you have an opportunity to see the work that happens with our young people in our lower division. We want to welcome our lower division Sabbath school to the upper level this morning for their promotion ceremony. Our lower division is headed out by Sister Velvet Scott, and they will now come forward for the program. Good morning and welcome to our promotion of our lower division. We're not having a full 13th Sabbath program, but we are having promotions and they have a few songs as a treat for you. Okay, so we're gonna start off with our kinder, our cradle rail class um, and they're gonna sing a song followed by the kindergarten class and the primary class and then we will have our promotions. Okay, so um, our cradle rail children, Come first to sing your song. You can line up right here. Where are the mummies? Okay, our kindergarten class. And our kindergarten class will be followed by the primary class who are big time hymnal singers. So I think you'll really enjoy their song. Okay, so kindergarten, you come first. Come on. Come on, Josh. Quick.
Your turn. Oh, I'm not going to hide the mic. You hide the mic. Like I said, that's our hymnal singing class. <laughs> okay, so we are um, doing very well downstairs, and half our children are not here today. We usually have up to 60 children when the pandemic has um, calmed down some. So our teachers are very dedicated, and I'm thankful for that, and our children are doing very well. So we have a few that are being promoted today. Can I have the cradle rule teacher come first? Okay, the first person that we have to promote is Nyla Bassett.
Come on, Nyla. I can't believe she's so shy. She's right. a big TV star, but she's shy. Okay, Nyla. Okay, the next person is Bruce Bob Bryce. I'm sorry, Bob Davis. Yeah, Bryce. <laughs> the next one is Evan Murray. I don't think he's here, Evan. No? Okay. Um, and the last one for this class is Sage Simmons Oh Boy. Yes, Sage! Yes. Here you go. Look, shake, shake your teacher's hand. Good job. Here we go. Okay. Can I ask the kindergarten teacher to come up? Okay, the first one, I don't believe he's here, but Roshano Richards. Charlie Simmons. Simons. <laughs> the life of the party is Charlie. Isn't he? Going to meet you, Charlie. Thank you, Charlie. The next one is Michael Keynes. Okay. And the last one for that class is Michael Mean. For the primary class, Jay is not letting any of the hymnal singers go yet, so there's no promotions in that class yet. And for the juniors to youth class, we have two, but I don't see them, which is Maya Otterbridge and Ty Sedenio. Okay, so that ends our program. Thank you for your attention.
morning, church family. Happy Sabbath. Here are the announcements for the upcoming week. In our family news, we have a number of prayer requests. Please refer to your bulletin for the prayer list and keep our church members, friends, and community in prayer. Condolences are extended to Barbara Matthew, Selena, Reginald Jr. and Lisa Matthew and family, Manola Douglas and family on the loss of her husband, their father, her brother-in-law, respectively, Reginald Matthew Sr. Also condolences to Maureen Fox, Kenneth Simons, Alan Fox and family on the loss of her sister, their aunt respectfully, Francine Simons. Please keep our families in your prayers and show your love and support during this difficult time of loss. Congratulations are extended to Diary Coddington, who was selected head boy at Dalwood Middle School for the year 2022 to 2023. So let's look at what is happening next week. Wednesday, our community service team will hold a feeding program from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Also, our regular Wednesday evening prayer meeting starts at 6.30 p.m. Let's have a look at upcoming events for this month. Stephen Ministry is available to serve you. They are ready to listen, care, encourage, and offer support. Contact one of our Stephen leaders Today, they include Sister Callie Tucker and Brother Delmont Tucker. The Bermuda Conference Prayer Ministries invites you to participate in 10 days of prayer, which has begun and ends on January the 15th. Refer to your bulletin or the screen regarding the various virtual platforms. Experience the power of prayer and the word with Pastor Hill. The Bermuda Conference invites all officers for training via Zoom on Sunday, January the 16th at 9 a.m. Refer to your bulletin or the screen regarding the Zoom details. The speaker is Dr. Jean Donaldson and the 2022 year of evangelism theme is entitled, I Will Go. Let's switch gears from announcements to celebrations. Here are the birthdays for the upcoming week. There are two Sabbath birthdays today. Today we have celebrating Christine Keynes and Jacqueline Nathan. Happy birthday to both of you. May you be especially blessed today. Tomorrow, the 9th of January, we have celebrating Jermaine Darrow and Niambi Landy. Monday, the 10th of January, we have celebrating a number of members, Dion Francis, Anthony Davis, and Helen Burrows. Happy birthday to the three of you. On Tuesday, the 11th of January, we have celebrating Gianluca Gibbons and Samara Lee Birch. Celebrating Wednesday, the 12th of January, we have Tamara Stevens and to Najee Taylor. Our last birthday celebrants for the week on Thursday, the 13th of January, include Shanae Williams, Kaden Bean, and Elder Evan Douglas. Happy birthday to all who celebrate this coming week. Enjoy your day of celebrations. Church family, these are announcements for the week. Please govern yourself accordingly and refer to the bulletin for more details. Have a wonderful spirit-filled worship experience. Again, happy Sabbath and God bless.
Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Uh, let's please stand for our call to worship. We're taken from Psalms 136. And it says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to God of gods, for his mercy endureth forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. To him who alone does great wonders, for his mercy endures forever. To him whose wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. To him who laid out the earth above the waters, for his mercy endures forever. To him who made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, for his mercy endures forever. How many of you had a rough week this week? It says, who remembered us in our lowly state, for his mercy endures forever. Who had to fight off enemies this week? It says, and rescued us from our enemies for his, worst, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all flesh for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy endures forever. Spirit of the living God. Lord, we come here into this, your house today, in need of a word from you. We're thankful that your word never returns unto you void. Matter of fact, when you speak, your words become physical realities in the hearts and the minds and in the lives of your people. And so we want, even now, to bow before you, to place ourselves out of sight and let you take full charge of this place. For without you, today's service is absolutely in vain. There's nothing special about us. What's special is that Jesus is in the building. So we come to you and ask that you would recreate that you would make us over anew, that we will leave this place changed because of your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name, let the redeemed of the Lord say, Amen. Amen.
assurance Jesus is mine oh what a foretaste just a foretaste of glory divine let's remain standing for our opening hymn blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine! Here of salvation, purchased by God, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. This is my story. His love. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day As we prepare to approach the throne of grace, my thoughts have been carried to Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, a very familiar passage text. And it reads, Come to me, all you who labor and are ever laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burdens are light. There are much things happening among us as brethren. There is pain, sickness, lack of jobs, underemployment. Many burdens that we are bearing. But there is one who says, come unto me with all our burdens, and he will give us rest. As the praise team leads us, prepares us for prayer, may we meditate and submitting ourselves, body, mind, and spirit, and our burdens to our God and Savior, Jesus Christ.
much as is possible. Most holy God, our Father who art in heaven, it is with humbleness, with gratitude and thanksgiving that we come before you. We come, Lord, not in our righteousness, but in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, your Son, through whom you have created all things. He is our Savior, he is our Creator, he is our Redeemer, he is our King, he is our all in all. And we come to you this morning, dear Father, knowing that in him we have salvation. For those who believe in him, Lord, you promise. We put our trust in him that you will save us. And this morning, Lord, we want to give you thanks for life and health and strength. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and watch care over us and over our families. Many of us have children, Lord, who are not within our household because they are away in university or they are even married and behind their home. We pray for them, thanking you for your protection towards them. Thank you, Lord, for protecting our children and grandchildren. Lord, we thank you for life and health. It is because of your goodness and your mercy that we are here. But we recognize, Lord, that among us there are many who are sick this morning and in need of your divine touch. We lift before you this morning, Lord, Brother Jeffers, husband of Sister Frances Jeffers. We ask, Lord, that you will send your Holy Spirit to be with them both. Lord, comfort them, Lord, give them peace during this time of trial that they go through, through sickness, the affliction of pain. May you bring them comfort and peace. We think of Lord Sister Davis, Mildred Davis. She needs your, your help, Lord, and we pray for her that she will continue to put her trust in you, Jesus, knowing that one day, one day, Lord, sickness will be a thing of the past. We live before you those who are mourning. We think of the Mati family. We ask that you will continue to be with them. Lord, be with Sister Barbara, the children, grandchildren. Bless them, we pray, dear Father. We think of the Fox family. We have right here Elder Fox, Elder Fox, and Elder Simons, and other siblings, the daughter. Away, Lord, we ask that you will be with them, comfort them as they prepare to funeralize their sister, haunt. Be with them, Lord. Strengthen and comfort them. We pray, Lord God, that you will be with our seniors. Many of our seniors, Lord, are sick at home or even in the hospital. We pray, Lord, that we, we will extend to them our encouragement, our prayers, and visit them where, Lord, it is possible. We ask your Father that you will be with the leadership of this church, with Pastor Steed and his family, his wife and children. We pray that you will keep them in good health, Lord, and as you will prepare, is, you have prepared them to present a message, a sermon, to us today, may that sermon, Lord, lift up Jesus Christ, your Son, and that you'll be glorified, and that each one of us be edified. We also recognize, Lord, that the leadership of this conference needs your direction, needs prayer, and so we pray for them, too, Lord, that you will give them added wisdom to lead us through this trouble sometimes. We ask, dear Father, that you will be with the government of this nation. They, too, Lord, we need tremendous wisdom. We pray for them, Lord, that they will be open and receptive to your directions, to your promptings. And lastly, Lord, we lift before you our students at Bihai and other educational institutions on this island and abroad. As they return to school, Lord, for this new semester, we ask that you will give them protection against this virus. Many have been afflicted by it, Lord, and we ask that you will protect them so that they will be safe and the, the hearts and minds of the parents can be comforted. Bless us as we continue to worship you this day. Lead us and may your Holy Spirit be with us in each step of this worship. We ask this in the precious and holy name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen.
God is here. Emmanuel, he is still here with us. Praise the Lord. So good to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Oh, thank God for waking us up this morning. And we know that God can do anything that he needs to do. He can do things that we have no idea that could have been done. Things that we seem impossible to us. God can do the impossible. He can move mountains and close doors and open doors. I heard a testimony this morning on, on the early hours this morning on the 10 days of prayer platform of a testimony of a pastor. This young lady gave her life story and oh my gosh, God brought her from the gutmost, <laughs> the gutters of life and changed her life around and her testimony, unbelievable almost, if I were to tell you, you wouldn't believe it, the things that God did for this now pastor. Um, so I know that God can do the impossible and as spiritual peace, my Lord, as we lead out this morning, be of us, Father God, as we're here trying to lead out. <laughs> ah, God is still good. We're gonna try and sing this song, uh, a uh, oldie goldie of ours, we say. It says a song by a famous group by the name of Witness. They sing a song called saying, he can do the impossible. Do you believe that he can do the impossible? This morning, amongst the pandemic, he can still do impossible things and heal and protect and provide. Yes, I'm stalling. God is good. He can do the impossible. Are you tired of disappointment? Do you feel all hope is gone? Do you struggle just to get by? You've no reason to go on. Someone should have told you that help is standing by. Jesus cares about you. He cares. He sees the pain you go through. He can do the impossible. Oh 
Can the church of the living God say amen? amen. Can we say amen again? Amen. How many are glad to have spiritual peace here in the house with us today? What a blessing, what a blessing to have spiritual peace, spiritual peace with us uh, here today. Uh, we first of all want to welcome you to the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church where worship is a joy and the love is real. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. We are elated that you decided to join us. And we want to inform you of a decision that we have made. And that is, no matter how long the pandemic lasts, no matter how long we have to wear masks, no matter how long we have to take antigen and PCR tests and get travel authorizations, no matter how many people are laid to rest, we here at Hamilton will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouths. Why don't you this morning, oh magnify the Lord with us today. Let us exalt his name together. Together. Come and taste and see that the Lord is still good. We have come here to fellowship today. We've come here to bless his holy name. And I know she's got some things she wants to bring to me. I don't know if I should take you first. I don't know. If, uh, I'll, I'll let you hold off. Because in essence, I want to get to these, I want to get to these remarks first. Is there somebody up there to handle the you're you going to run it from there. Okay, fine. That's fine. Let's get into our pastoral remarks. Just a few quick remarks that I want uh, to share with you this morning. Let me go to that next slide, if you would. Uh, first of all, it's not work. Is it working? Okay, yes. Uh, one of the things that we've done this year, the theme is God will do in 2022. God will do in 2022. God will do what? <laughs> God will do whatever he wants to, where he wants to, and how he wants to. But I want to let you know that the division, the North American division, has declared this year the year of evangelism. And we are encouraging each member to just win or just to win one. Is that all right? How many of you believe you can win somebody to Jesus Christ in 2020? Don't be afraid. Raise your hand. Raise your hand with confidence. All the way up, Travis. All, all the way up. Come on now. Did you believe you can win somebody uh, to Jesus in 2022? Uh, we're getting close to the end. We need to tell our friends that Jesus is coming soon. Does that make sense, everybody? Uh, we need to let the world know that he's coming soon. That's our president, I believe that is uh, G. Alexander Bryant, uh, the president of North American Division that has put out that this will be the year of evangelism. Next slide. Uh, in accordance with that, the Bermuda Conference uh, will be having officer training. Uh, we'll be having officer training on January the 16th. Uh, that's not tomorrow, but of course, that's next week, Sunday, from 9 till 11 a.m. via Zoom. From 9 to 11, we will have officers training, and all officers should attend. Uh, the speaker is Dr. Donaldson. He will be the one that will be making that presentation, and that is via Zoom. That's in your bulletin as well, so you should be able to check that out. Next slide, if you would. Now, the day before, I want you to focus in, personal ministry leaders, those of you that are passionate about evangelism. We need a list and hopefully we can get that list today. You can send me a text, you can send me an email if you want to be part of the team. But Dr. Donaldson is looking for a few people who really want to do evangelism in 2022 because he's going to have a special session on Sabbath afternoon. That's next week, Sabbath afternoon. For anyone that is very serious or very passionate about doing evangelism and you really want to get out there in the streets and win some souls, which I know is almost a whole church just now, almost a whole church. Uh, we want you on that Zoom session from 4 till 5 p.m. this coming Sabbath afternoon. Now, our president would like to know how many of you are planning on coming. So if you could just send me a text or send me an email, send me whatever. My stuff is right there uh, on the bulletin. You can see it. Just send me a text, send me an email, and we'll be happy uh, to make sure that you are accommodated for this special session uh, with Dr. Gene Donaldson. Next slide, if you would. Next slide. Bermuda Institute, as you see, man, uh, they are back in session. They are back in the building. But... Uh, they have a very strong word of warning that comes directly from our principal, and that is with the rise in the number of COVID-19 cases on the island, 
we are imploring parents to be vigilant and consistent with the testing of their children every Sunday and Wednesday night. It's very important, as you can see, Omicron is spreading very rapidly um, and it's shutting down things like every other variant did. Uh, and so in essence, we're trying to protect our school, our faculty, our staff and our parents. And so we just wanna encourage our, our, our parents to make sure that those tests are being taken on every Sunday and Wednesday night. Next slide, next slide. What do we have? Yes, uh, church board will meet uh, possibly in the sanctuary. Initially, the board said they want to meet in the sanctuary. I think, depending on how bad this variant gets, we may have to make a, a timely decision next weekend. Uh, we always like to stay fluid, uh, flexible, and forthcoming. If it changes, we will let you know. I know we have enough space in here to social distance as a board. At the same time, though, with so many people coming down with COVID, we need to be cautious. We need to be safe rather than sorry in regards to making sure uh, that the board members members uh, do not, at least, do not catch COVID here at church. Uh, so in essence, uh, we will let you know uh, next weekend exactly where we will be depending on how things are going. So right now, it's in the balance. Next slide. Sabbath birthdays, Sabbath birthdays, Sabbath birthdays uh, in the house. They say January babies rock. I don't know why they say that, that statement. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. It's, it's, it's cold, you know, it's very cold. It's a very cold month. You woke up this morning, it was a little chilly, you know, but we do have two Sabbath birthdays and, and their family. That's family, actually, you know, and that of Sister Christine Keynes. Come on, can the church say amen? And Sister Jacqueline Nathan. Sister Jacqueline Nathan. Travis has some amazing things planned this afternoon and this evening, and, and we wait to hear those fantastic reports. Uh, we're looking forward to it with great anticipation. But indeed, uh, we want to wish you happy, happy birthday, sis. Love you like life, and indeed, hope this is a very special Sabbath birthday for you. Come on, let's go. It's time to greet someone new in 2022. We want to greet somebody new in 2022. Now, we ain't hugging and touching and all that yet, but we want you to wave to somebody different. Come on, why don't you stand on your feet with me? Why don't you stand on your feet with me together? Come on, repeat after me this morning. There's no place. Uh, come on, I can't hear you. There's no place like this place. Uh, anywhere near this place. Uh, so this must be the place. Uh, come on, come on, if you would, if you would, turn around. Turn around and wave to somebody that you haven't waved to all year. Just wave to them. Hold the wave, hold the wave. Now, now turn back and face me. Turn back and face me. I need you to turn around. I want you to find somebody else this time. I want you to find somebody else this time, and I want you to give them a smile. But you know how we do it. It's a very quick smile. Like you pull it down and you put it right back up. You got to pull it down. Mr. Cage, you got to pull it down and put it right back up. All right, come on. Turn to somebody. Turn to somebody. Pull it down real quick, real quick. Pull it right back up. Quick smile, quick smile, quick smile. Don't let the, don't let the COVID out. Don't let it out. Keep it in. Uh, what a blessed day we are here at God's house. And right after we fellowship with one another, uh, actually, go ahead and have a seat. Have a seat. Let's go ahead and take care. We got a special moment right now. And let's go ahead and call this young lady to the front uh, right now. Let's bring her up. Elders, if the elders would join me, the elders present, if you would join me here here on the platform at this time. Good morning. Good morning. That's better. Good morning and happy Sabbath. So last week we, uh, well, week before last on Christmas, we had five people who actually um, gave their hearts to the Lord and went down to the water and gave a baptism. Last week, we gave baptismal certificates and gifts to four of them because I knew of four of them before I went on my vacation. I was watching last week and I heard what Pastor said about the clerk leaving beforehand like I absconded or something. <laughs> I did not know about person number five. So we are going to invite her forward this morning because I did her bag once I got back. So. Calicia Glasgow, can you come forward, please? So while we're doing that, I'll just read what the certificate says. And someone said to me, why do you read the certificate every time? Everyone knows what the certificate says. No, everyone doesn't know what the certificate says. And then there might be someone new who's watching online who doesn't know. So I'm reading the certificate and it says, in harmony with the Lord's command, Calicia S. Glasgow, was baptized at the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church on the 25th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2021. 
and received into the Hamilton Seventh-day Adventist Church on that same day, the 25th day of December in the year of our Lord, 2021, and received into, well, I said that already, of the Bermuda Conference on that same day, and is signed by myself and by the pastor. I'm going to sing that fellowship song right now, a song that uh, touches our heart, a song that tells us that God is good. <laughs> He's always good. Isn't he good, man? Come on, let us sing that song together as we worship in spirit and in truth. Here we go. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. a song called Love is a Fly, Flown High, Get Your Flags in the Air. Here we go. Love is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. Love is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, and a king is a resident there. So let it fly. Let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is a resident. Joy, joy is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, from the castle of my heart. From the castle of my heart, joy is a flag flown high from the castle of my heart, and the king is a resident there. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know, let the whole world know, let the whole world know. So let it fly in the sky, let the whole world know that the king is a resident there. Flag flown high from the castle 
is a resident. So let it fly, so let it fly in the sky. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world know. Let the whole world. Give her a different mic. That one is that one's been muted. Good morning, church. Today's scripture reading will be taken from First Peter five verse eight. Be sober, be vigilant, because your because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I got it. Today I'm going to talk to you about snakes, believe it or not. How many of you have ever touched a snake? Yeah? So the rest of you don't want to touch a snake? Okay, yeah, some of you would, some of you wouldn't. I had no choice when I touched the snake. I was actually in the, in, in the Bermuda Regiment, and we were up around Windsor Castle, which the Jamaicans were nose up in the cockpit country. And because I was a non-combatant, they left me to watch the gear. And it got so dark, if I put my hand right here, I couldn't see it. So I figured that if, if somebody was going to come, I would hear them before I saw them. So I was laying back, and this thing had the nerve to go crawling across my, my neck. I don't know if it was venomous or, or not, but it was gone before it could have bit me and it didn't come back, and I was glad about that. Another time I was in New Jersey, and I'm in a pet store, and I'm looking around, and, and I'm seeing all these different animals in the pet store, monkeys and gerbils and, and, and dogs and cats, and you think about it, I'm seeing it. And this man says, oh, I'm going to take Rocky for a walk. And I'm looking around, okay, who's Rocky? Smile on my face. Didn't think he was going to pick up about an eight foot. Um, red tail boa constrictor. And my mouth dropped open, and I backed all the way to the back of the, 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 the store. He ran out and went to the right. I ran out, went to the left. Because <laughs> I would have never expected him to pick up that. Now, other things about snakes that I, some things about snakes that I, I have noticed. You know how the Bible says in Matthew 10, 16, to be wise as serpents, but to be as um, harmless as doves. You know the Bible says that? Well, one thing about snakes that um, actually fascinates me is how patient a snake could be. Because a snake could be waiting, waiting out to catch, a, 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 you know, catch its food. And the snake, a snake will wait for days, sometimes weeks for something that it, it, it will eat to come by. And I said, you know what? That's how patient we need to be when we are trying to win souls for Christ. You know, why rush it? If it's, you know, take, take your time. Because if you try to rush the person, then you're most likely going to turn them off from the gospel then turn them on to the gospel. So be wise as serpents and be patient. Now, on the other hand, we all know that serpents can be very dangerous to us. You know, um, when, when, when God cursed the serpent, he said, upon thy belly thou shalt go, which means that serpents didn't always, weren't always on their belly. Otherwise, he would not have said, upon your, upon your, be your belly you, you, thou shalt go. And the reason why I think that God took flight from, from, from snakes is because if snakes still could fly, like Alan White tells us in Patriarchs and Prophets, the only thing left alive would be snakes. I'm quite convinced of that. So God puts snakes on their belly because they can be dangerous. Now, I was watching, I'm not sure it was National Geographic or something, but anyway, it was something over, over the internet, and they shared this 
African rock python, and he was in this pool of water, and he was waiting for something to come by. And his nerves, every now and then you just see his eyes and his nerves pop up above the water, then he duck, duck back down. And when it came up, because he could feel the vibrations of animals when they came to drink. And, and it, it, it was like the snake was going, nope, too big, nope, too small. Then finally, it's, this huge snake must have been about 18 to 20 feet. Yup, just what I'm waiting for, right? And again, it comes back again to being wise like serpents, right? Winning souls for Christ. Be patient. Don't rush it. No, your friend might not have listened to you today, but he might listen to you tomorrow, or, down the, or she might listen to you down, down the line a bit. But it is our job to always keep the gospel before them so that when Christ, I mean, so, so that they will always be mindful of Christ. You know who did that um, for me? My, my mother's mother. Every time I got Rana, even when I weren't going to church, because it was 14 years I didn't go to church, all she wanted to talk about is the Bible. So even though I was out of church and I was doing some things, there was a lot of things I didn't do because of my grandmother's patience with me. So that eventually, when I, um, just after I went 21, I came back into the church, right? I decided the world wasn't that good, and really, it's not that good out there. I don't care how they paint it up, because if the world was that good, why would I have come back into the church at the age of 21? I would have stayed out there, right? So the, the, the devil, and the, and the other thing that you have to watch out for is that the devil also makes things look good. You know, the devil can be patient with you too. And he'll send his, and he's waiting for you, and he makes things look good, and he makes you feel at peace, and all the while he's, listen, he's looking to bite you and if, or act, act like a python or an anaconda or something and wrap you up. Why? Because he doesn't want you to escape your sins. Right? But there is somebody who is greater. Because another thing I saw was where this snake in India, big python, must be about 15 feet, was wrapped around this mo a monkey. And a man came and unwrapped the snake from around the monkey and let the monkey go. And the snake just look looked at him. Why? Because the snake realized that there was somebody more powerful than him. Jesus is far more powerful than the devil could ever even hope to be. Things might seem um, to get away from us sometimes, but guess what? Jesus is mightier. So when somebody's tempting them to do wrong, just remember they're trying to do what that snake, the devil, is trying to want you to do. But remember the commitment that you have made to God. And just and say, get thee behind me, Satan. For thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Amen. Amen. Um, somebody want to give a prayer for us? Okay, let us walk quietly back to our seats.
Morning, church. Thank you. Can you hear me? There's a difference between stealing and robbery. There is a difference between being a thief and being a robber. When I think of a thief, I'm reminded of the story of the thief on the cross the one that gave his heart to Christ. Spirit of Prophecy says that he was not a hardened criminal. His heart was not cold. A thief church doesn't want to have contact with you when he steals from you. When he breaks into your house and, and rummages through your stuff, he wants you to stay asleep. He wants to do it quietly. It has to be a secret. Shh. However, a robber doesn't care if you know that he is stealing from you. It's like a bank robber. They want to take their money by any means necessary. And if they have to use force, they will use it. In its simplest form, a robber can be someone who has borrowed something from you. If someone has borrowed something from you and you ask for it back and they haven't given, they haven't given it to you, they're not stealing from you. They robbed you in broad daylight. In Malachi chapter 3, God says, will a man rob God? And the people said, how have we robbed you? You have robbed me in tithe and in offering. You have robbed me in broad daylight. You have robbed me to my face. Return, beloved a faithful tithe and offering and watch God pour out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive as the deacons come forward. Let us pray. Amen. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we ask for forgiveness for robbing you. We ask that the monies that are to be collected go forth and finish the work. We help, we ask God that you give us the faith to believe in the promise that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Let God's people everywhere say amen. amen. Oh 
It's taken from John 11, verses 25 and 26. John 11, verses 25 and 26. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? May we, as we contemplate these words, truly believe this. In Jesus, we will never die but live. your soul long after Jesus? That is the question. What are you prepared to do in 2022? <laughs> I just made that one up. But what are you prepared to do in 2022? Are you just gonna sit there in the pew in 2022? Yeah. Do what you did last year? <laughs> or are you gonna do something different? Are you gonna try and each one reach one? Are you going to call that neighbor who you haven't talked to across the hedge? Are you going to speak to that co-worker who you pass by every day? Are you going to be a witness for him? Does your soul pant after Jesus? Do you long to serve him? These are the questions that we have to ask in this, in this new year because we are grateful that we are here in the new year. Amen? Amen. Oh, I know, this still, I know the rent still followed you and the bills still followed you from last year, but we ought to be thankful that we are here, that we are living, we're in the land of the living. So while we're here, while God has brought us into this sanctuary, I just want to lift up holy hands and we've come to worship him. We ask God to empty up us ourselves and fill us with his Holy Spirit, that even as the deer panted, that we to our souls will long after him. Do you love him this morning? Do you love the Lord this morning? Oh, you don't have to love me, but do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Because he is worthy of all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Do not forget that. Amen. Hallelujah.
My heart, my mind, 
Can the church say amen? Uh, come on, somebody here say hallelujah this morning. I just want to encourage all of you that have been uh, tuning in and being a part of the uh, 10 days of prayer. I want to encourage you to continue to do so. Uh, there's two things going on. You have a conference one and you also have a local one here uh, being led out by Elder Kenneth Simons. And that will be, I think, starting tomorrow or Monday. St starting Monday uh, will be five days where we have uh, five elders. Five of our leaders will be speaking uh, in the evening at 6.30 here uh, in the sanctuary. All right, so we invite you, if you'd like to come out or you can tune in online, it will be live stream. But we'll be having that to complement or to go along with the NAD, along with the conference uh, in their uh, endeavors during this 10 days of prayer. The conference meets in the morning. They meet in the morning. Tomorrow, I think it's 7 o'clock in the morning. And then uh, you can also get on the YouTube throughout the week at 6 a.m. I think it's 6 a.m. during the week. So uh, we invite you to be a part of that. It's been a blessed and uh, refreshing experience. And there are many that are attending. So come on out and support that. And then come and support your own church uh, in the evening beginning on Monday. Uh, at 6.30. Uh, also, it was brought to my attention that last week when I did the birthdays that I uh, neglected to mention two wonderful couples. I did the birthdays. I didn't do anniversaries. Uh, and there were two people that were, uh, if you were married, two couples were married on uh, January the 1st. Uh, one is uh, brother and sister uh, Lodrick Holder, uh, brother and sister Lodrick Holder, uh, they celebrate their anniversary on January the 1st, and uh, Dr. Uh, Nevin uh, Williams and his wife, uh, they celebrate their anniversary. I believe they got married uh, on January 1st, the very first day I landed here. Uh, that's the day they got married. So we want to wish them a happy fourth, happy fourth anniversary. Having said that, uh, let us go ahead, if you would, if you don't mind, if we can jump into God's word, I would... Uh, I appreciate that at this time. I'm going to share this. Um, I'm going to share this uh, with, yeah, I'll share that. Sure. I'll send that up to the, to the booth, all right? Come on, let's get into God's word. Let us pray together, Spirit of the living God. In the wee hours of this morning, you and I had a conversation about this moment. Speak now, Lord, for thy servant is listening. In Jesus' name, let the redeemed of the Lord say, come on, somebody say amen. Somebody say praise the Lord. I'm going to ask if you bring me my uh, brown folder. If you could bring me my brown folder out of the office, I appreciate it. Let's get, if you would, verse 52. I lift up before you uh, verse 52. Verse 52 of the eighth chapter of the gospel as recorded by John. As you know, I've been in John for quite some time and uh, having a great time making my way through it. But John chapter 8 and uh, verse uh, 52, here's what the Bible says. Thank you. The Bible says, then said the Jews unto him. Then said the Jews unto him. Now... We know 
that thou hast a devil. This is the Jews talking to Jesus. This is the Jews talking to Jesus. They said, then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead and the prophets and thou sayest if a man keep my saying he shall never taste of death hmm I have entitled this disputative this uh, paternalistic this mess uh, Mephistophelian pericope yeah I want to call it that Abraham is dead Abraham is dead church I want you to understand today that massive crowds attended Jesus wherever he went Jesus was a very popular speaker uh, he spoke words of truth and the people loved him and they followed him they flocked after him there were throngs of people following Jesus everywhere he went the people believed on Jesus it was the church folk it was the church leaders that didn't believe on him every single day they're out there trying to find cause and trying to find reason how they can take his life they want him dead and they want to kill him and if you would John chapter 8 brings us into a very special moment with Jesus and his followers the Bible uh, lets us know that in essence uh, in verse 30 of chapter 8 the Bible says and he spake these words many believed on him then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Then we have the famous text in verse 32, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. One of the things I want to let you know today that the truth is the man we call Jesus Christ. He is the truth, and when you know him, you will be set free. Uh, friends, I need you to understand in this particular text, Jesus is getting into a very heated discussion and you need to understand that the devil does not play by the same rules that Jesus plays by Jesus has to still be upright still be honest still be truthful still be kind still be gracious while the devil you will find in this text is doing all kinds of wicked things and slandering as best he can the man we call Jesus Christ they answered him and they said we be Abraham's seed uh, and were never in bondage to any man how sayest thou ye shall be made free Oh, it's an amazing thing because Jesus is trying to help them to understand that the freedom that he's offering them is freedom from their sins. Freedom from, if you would, their current existence. That in essence, yes, they were not totally free anyway. They were under Roman oppression. But the truth of the matter is they're trying to argue that they have never been free. That they've never been slaves. They've always been free. And Jesus lets them know, he lets them know emphatically that that in essence, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. Or if you would, doulos is also translated not just servant, but is also translated slave. He that does sin is the slave to sin. The Bible lets us know uh, very clearly, but he lets us know that if the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Uh, Jesus is trying uh, to save them, and they are fighting him every step of the way. The Bible says that Jesus says, I know ye are Abraham's seed. I know that you were born of his lineage, but because you're born of his lineage doesn't mean you are necessarily uh, of the same kind. Oh, Lord, help us, man. Lord, help us. Come on now. Even in this life, we have brothers, you know what I'm saying? And then we have sellouts. 
Oh, Lord, I wish I had a witness in this place. Um, that in essence, everybody that's, uh, if you would, your color is not necessarily your kind. Uh, I wish I had an understanding in this place today that in essence, sometimes you have people that are your friends only for what they can benefit from you. Uh, you need to understand that they will sell you out in a second uh, for anybody else uh, if they feel that person can give you more, that person can give them more than what you are giving then. It's an amazing thing because even in the church and even amongst Jesus' disciples, he has sellouts. Uh, the truth of the matter is, Judas would sell him out. <laughs> Judas, who walked with him for three and a half years. Judas, who was a so-called faithful follower of Jesus. Judas, who heard his teachings for three and a half years, was still a sellout. Huh? He was still as, and you, uh, hold on a second now. Before we condemn Judas and everybody else, you ought to understand that Ellen White makes it very, very clear. She makes it extremely clear that in essence, our greatest challenge in the time of trouble will come from people who once sat in the pews with us. There are sellouts uh, in the house of God. Uh, uh, not everybody in church is necessarily our kind. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. Uh, to, the, the truth of the matter is there are sellouts in the house of God. And as soon as trouble comes, as soon as trouble comes, the shaking will occur and they will run out of the building and join those who they feel they can be safer with. Sellouts in God's house. Huh? The question you have to ask is, are you a sellout? Huh? Are you a sellout? Because the truth of the matter is, is that nobody knows you better than the people that are with you all the time. And they will be the ones that are turning you in and trying to get you in trouble in the time of trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, come on, turn to your neighbor. Look, you, look, look at your neighbor. Don't be afraid. Look your neighbor right in the eyes. Look your neighbor right in the eyes. And say, look at him, look at him. Say, I, I, I hope he ain't talking about you. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that even in God's house, you have traitors. Amazing thing because he said, if the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. He said, I know you're Abraham's seed, but you don't do the works of Abraham. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Huh? This is Jesus. I do the will of my father, and you do the will of your father. Hold on now. This is where they get, they say, start to get nasty. Here's what they say. In, in verse 39, the Bible says, They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. If you were truly, if you were truly Abraham's seed, you would do the works of Abraham. You're going to get this in a little bit. But Abraham is dead. Uh, hold on a second now. The Bible says in verse 40, but now you seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. In other words, what God is telling them is that when Abraham lived to see my day, Abraham got happy. Abraham loved the truth. Abraham loved me and I am the truth. Uh, he's letting them know emphatically that Abraham uh, was actually happy about seeing me. Yet you say that you are Abraham's seed, but you don't like me. You're trying to kill me. You hate the very presence of me. It's an amazing thing because, in essence, these leaders did not like the truth. They didn't want to hear the truth. They didn't want the truth told to them. They rejected the truth. They were not in love with the truth. Hence, they could not love God because Jesus was and is the truth. Our friends, you need to understand uh, that truth cuts and truth hurts uh, and truth is difficult to swallow. But the truth of the matter is, is that you need truth if you want to be saved. If you want to be saved, you need Jesus to come into your life. And when he comes in, he comes in cutting. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's an amazing thing because 
The Bible doesn't stop there in verse 39. It's very interesting because it moves on. You seek to kill me because I told you the truth. And then he, Jesus keeps talking about their daddy. Now you gotta understand, there was always conversations going on between Jesus and these leaders about everybody's daddy. So in other words, in other words, it's very interesting to me because in other words, they would oftentimes, they would oftentimes argue. So for instance, you know, when we came up as kids, when we came up as kids, Mike, you know, the thing back then was they tried to talk about your mama. With Jesus and these guys, everything is your daddy. <laughs> I'm serious. Everything is your daddy. Why? Because Jesus was so popular, he was so popular, and he drew so much attention and so much jealousy from the leaders that they were constantly trying to find something wrong with him, and the best thing they could come up with was we ain't never seen your daddy. Yeah, your, your, your mama got pregnant before the wedding. Lord help us. Um, and, and in essence, in essence, in essence, uh, she ain't never been really fully able to explain where you come from. And, uh, he'd be on the playground. Everybody's like, I know who my daddy is. Who's your daddy, Jesus? Um, who's your daddy? We ain't never seen your daddy. You say he's what? He's a spirit? Really? Uh, where, where, where is he? Every single time, guy can't play marbles without people teasing him about his daddy. He can't go swimming without people asking, where's his daddy? When it's time for birthday parties and everything else, everybody has a daddy showing up, but Jesus only has a guy who's there, who's telling everybody that he's not his daddy. It's an incredible moment. And so you hear Jesus all the time uh, defending himself, trying to let everybody know about his daddy. All he does is talk about his daddy. I aim to please my daddy. I love my daddy. Everything I say, I got from my daddy. I look like my daddy. I walk like my daddy. I talk like my daddy. Matter of fact, if you've seen me, you've already seen my daddy. Constantly and over and over again, he drives that home. But here's how it goes. He says, you do the deeds of your father. They said they to him, this is, this is, this is dirty. <laughs> this is cutting. <laughs> this is what they say. We be not born of fornication. Verse 41. Hold on a second. 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 They're telling Jesus emphatically, emphatically, Travis, they're telling him flat out, we know how you came here. <laughs> okay? We know exactly how you came here. We know exactly where you came from. You came from fornication, what they're trying to assert on Jesus Christ. Not accepting, if you would, that immaculate conception. Not accepting the fact that Jesus uh, was actually born of a virgin. Oh, come on now. That's no ordinary task. Because he was still, <laughs> she was still a virgin when Jesus came out. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place. It's one thing, if you would, to marry a virgin. It's another thing to be born of a virgin. Because Jesus has to come, if you would, and be placed inside of Mary's womb so that he can be born. And Mary can't be touched. Mary can't be. And understand, what seemed to be a negative thing was necessary that prophecy and that the Bible could be fulfilled. Because in essence, by placing this embarrassing thing out there, that in essence, he did not or was not born, he did not have a daddy, was actually a fulfillment of prophecy. What they thought was destroying him was actually them confirming that the Bible was true. That yes, uh, Jesus reversed the process of, if you would, creation. Yes, he did. You see, you see, Adam uh, was born uh, with no mama. <laughs> Jesus was born with no daddy. <laughs> oh, I need you to understand those of you that perhaps grew up in a single parent home, you ought to understand today that God loves you and wants to do something great with you regardless of your upbringing. You ought to understand today that the God that we serve wants to do great things through you. Matter of fact, if you're missing a parent, then join the ranks of Jesus because that's how he started out too. It's an amazing thing because the Bible says to us, the Bible says to us in verse 42, Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, 
he would love ye would love me for I proceeded from God and neither came I of myself but he sent me why do you why do ye not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word some of you come to church and you cannot understand the word you cannot digest the word because you don't know the Lord Oh, Lord help us. Spiritual things uh, are spiritually discerned. Uh, and you need to understand today that the truth of the matter is, is that if you want to, to feed on God's word when you come to church and digest it, then you got to be eating his word all week long. If not, God's word will cause you indigestion. Yeah. Can't wait to throw it up as soon as you get out of church so you can get back to your regular diet. It's an amazing thing because the Bible says, why do you not understand my speech even because ye cannot hear my word? And then he busts them right in their chops. In verse 44, the Bible says this, ye are <laughs> of your father the devil and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. Listen to what the text says. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it. Hold on a second now. In other versions it says when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own nature. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like one version said this. It said when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his native tongue. <laughs> that's all he can do is tell lies uh, that's all he can do is run from the truth and you need to understand uh, that anytime you decide in your life that you're going to insist on running away from Christ then you are running from the truth and ye are of your father the devil it's an amazing thing because in verse 45 the Bible says and because I tell you the truth ye believe me not which of you convinced me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Huh? Does anybody in church speak a different language? Huh? You speak a different language? Kind of? The Cain's kids speak, they kind of speak a different language. Is there anybody else? It's, it actually speaks fluently a different language. I'm wondering, does anybody speak a different language? You do, sis. What language do you speak? French Creole. French, stand up. French Creole, French Creole. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up for me. Stand up for me, man. French Creole, man. You gotta love French Creole, Travis. And, uh, I pass it up in Boston. You run into a lot of Haitians. Sac passe. You know what I'm saying, huh? That's how they talk, man. Naboule. Huh? Come on, Nouye. Huh? Nubie. Huh? But come on, say, just say, just say, just say one, or well, Christian sentence. Just say one sentence out loud. Can you say one sentence, a Christian one? I don't want you to know because I don't want them to know. But tell me what you would just say a sentence. Um, body bomb. That means body food. All right, so body Did you guys know what she meant when she said that? Huh? Why? Because that's not your native tongue. Stay with me now. But I could, I could talk to her. I could talk to her about some of her favorite foods. Like, 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 like Dury a pois. Huh? Dury sauce pois. Huh? Some banana a poisson. Huh? Huh? Some maïe moulin zaboka. Huh? I, I, I can speak it because you and I have been around the same language. But those that haven't been around it cannot speak that language. And you need to understand that you can't understand and speak God's language if you never spend any time with God. His language is foreign to you and it's time for the believers of God to actually make the language of scripture their native language. Thank you so much. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. Verse 48 says this, verse 48, I like 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, say we not well <laughs> that, that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? These guys are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man, some of the dirtiest people in your life that you will ever meet come to church with you. 
Oh, come on now. Some of you know that there are people at your jobs, people in the workplace, just foreigners. Your neighbors treat you better than people at church. I ain't afraid to tell you. Some, some of you know what I'm talking about. And understand this. Here's what they say too. Remember, remember earlier they busted him about the fact that uh, you were born from fornication. Now they say to him, look, sir, the, the, say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? That's how they talk to him. Huh? No, no, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep going on. Verse 49, I'm going to get back to it. Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Verse 50 then says this, and I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, here's what Jesus crossed the line with him, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. This is where they get fired up. This is where they get fired up. They said to the Jews unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil. <laughs> Abraham is dead. <laughs> and the prophets, and thou sayest, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Understand this. Understand this. When they call him a Samaritan that has a devil, the Samaritans were completely despised by the Jews even though they were related to them. You see, certain of the tribes, they actually went off and married other nations. So they were considered half-breeds or mixed breeds. And so in essence, what they're calling Jesus is a demon-possessed half-breed. This is what they're calling him, right? They're actually trying to bust him at the lowest point. They're saying that in essence, you actually work with and conspire with demons. Now, it's very interesting to me that they come at Jesus and they say that he, in essence, uh, has conspired with demons. When every time you see Jesus running into demons, the demons immediately recognize who he is. Ah, oh, come on, man. Uh, son of David, uh, have mercy. Uh, don't throw us out. Uh, don't take, look, it's amazing because you need to understand that demons were not always demons. Demons used to be angels in heaven. There was one third of the angels that were thrown out. And you need to understand today that that one third, when they were cast out, became demons. But don't get it twisted. Angels are created beings. And even though now they're demons, they still know who their creator is when they see him. And when they would run into him, they would beg for mercy. Just send us into the pigs. Don't destroy us. Thou art the great one of Israel. Do not kill us. Demons, uh, when they see Jesus, have to confess his name because he is their creator. Why is it uh, that in the house of God, uh, we can confess his name uh, when we come into his presence? Uh, what is it about us uh, that we got to hold our tongue instead of celebrating the goodness of God and all he has done for us? The demons... Call his name. Huh? And they don't disrespect him either. Holy one of Israel, have mercy on us. This is demons pleading for their life because they know that the one that's before them holds the breath in their lungs. It's amazing because they say unto him, now we know that thou hast a devil because Abraham is dead. And the prophets, in other words, the immediate inference that's going on here is that Jesus said, if you believe in my word, you will never die. So in essence, the fact that Abraham was dead made them angry because they're saying, are you really think you're better than Abraham? Are you saying that Abraham didn't believe God? Are you saying Abraham didn't believe the truth? And so they're angry about that. Now here's the thing, in verse 53, in verse 53, I want to take us there. In verse 53, the Bible says, And thou art thou greater than our father Abram, which is dead, and the prophets are dead, who makest thou thyself? In other words, they're asking Jesus, Who the world do you think you are? Now, if you just hang out with me for a few minutes, you'll hear Jesus answer exactly who he is. But they ask him the question, Exactly who do you think you are? Who makest thou thyself? Bible says 
If you would, uh, in verse 54, Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. You say that my daddy is your God, yet you're trying to kill his son. Now, it's very interesting because uh, Abraham is very significant, and you ought to know that Abraham is considered the patriarch of three of the world's major religions. So the world has, I don't know, about five or six major world religions. Three of them claim Abraham as their patriarch, okay? One is Christianity, right? We are all Christians. We are Seventh-day Adventist Christians. Okay, the second one is Judaism, right? The Jews claim Abraham as the first Jew, and in essence, he is one of their patriarchs. And then, of course, who's the other one? The Muslims, right? Islam. Islam claims that indeed Abraham is their patriarch as well, right? Now, understand this. Abraham went through an incredible experience where in essence he had to learn about the sacrifice that Jesus would once do for us on Calvary. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had to learn. So in essence, the way he learned was that first of all, it takes him forever, him and Sarah takes him forever to ha finally have a child because Sarah was barren. And not just was she barren, Scripture talks about her wound was dead, Travis. It was dead. <laughs> no, 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 no. You can't make this stuff up. Here's the thing. Because in essence, not only was she barren, but she had gone past her time, or past menopause. She had gone past the time where she could even have kids. Huh? Woman's way up in her 90s. Huh? You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and uh, Jesus want to show up talking about you going to have a child. And she laughed, right? She's in there laughing. Some of you laugh. Some of you in your 60s, 70s, 80s, you laugh. If I say you're going to have a baby in nine months, the thought of you having a baby in nine months drives you absolutely insane. But, 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 but Sarah was more, if you were, compliant to God's will. She weren't like some of you. Some of you are like, no, 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 Lord. No, 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 no. I'm not having no baby at night. I need you to understand that so long as there is breath in your body, God has something that he wants you to do. Amen. Huh? I don't care how old you are. Listen, you are not, listen, everybody in here is young. Huh? Everybody in here is young. Got my uncle over here looking at me. <laughs> I think he's like, what are, you, what are you, 91 now? What are you? 91, 91 years old. He said, no, 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 nephew, I'm not, I'm not young no more. But understand this, everybody in here is young. You know why? And here's the thing, you have to learn to respect your elders. You have to learn to respect those who are above you. Um, because you serve a very old God. I wish I had a witness in this place, man. He calls himself the ancient of days. Huh? Huh? You need to understand uh, that everybody in here is very young compared to God. You're just babies. Huh? Just babies. Huh? Come on, I need somebody, I need somebody that's over 70 to say I'm still a baby. <laughs> Come on, I, he's with me. <laughs> I'm still a baby, huh? Huh? Come on now, you're going to live if you're faithful to God throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity. You're very young. You're infants. There are people in the Bible that didn't have babies till after you will die. People didn't start having kids. They were 100, 120, 130. They just started having kids. Come on, I'm inspiring a senior couple right now. I'm inspiring them right now, huh? They're getting thoughts. Dennis, they're getting some thoughts. I'm telling you, man, it's a new year. It's 2022, Travis. They're having thoughts. Watch your parent. Keep your eye on your parent. Travis, you better watch them. I'm telling you right now, they're getting ideas right now, man. Understand that God is not through with you until there no longer is any breath in your body. It's an amazing thing because the Bible says, the Bible says, Jesus answered, if I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom you say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I shall be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his saying. 
and then he got into some deep stuff. You see, Abraham, to learn that lesson, had to go up on the mountain. Huh? One night in the wee hours of the morning, the angel spoke to him and said, take thy son, thine only son, and go and kill him up on the mountain. And you got to understand, uh, Ellen White lets us know that, that Abraham could not bear to tell his wife what he was about to do. So he snuck off with Isaac and a couple of servants, and he gets to the base of the mountain, but Abraham, who's in the hall of fame of faith, uh, not just because uh, he trusted God, but also because of the faith he showed on that day. Because Abraham, at the base of the mountain, has got the two servants with him. It's him and Isaac. It's four of them. And he tells the two servants to stay at the base of the mountain. Huh? Now, it's okay if he, he just says that. But he also says this, Elder Hilton. He says, because we will be back. Oh, man. He's going up the mountain huh, to slay his son. But he tells the servant, we're both coming back. He believed in the promise, even though it didn't seem possible in what he was about to do. So he learned in that day what it's like to feel like your son is going to die. Hence, he identified with the father, and he understood what that was like. And then Jesus says, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. He saw it, and he rejoiced. Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, now he's stepping over the line again. He's saying that I had conversations with Abraham. Come on now. Jesus is saying, I talked to Abraham. When Abraham was alive. Uh, Abraham had been alive a real long time. And so in essence, the Jews get all upset. They get angry. They get all, oh man, they get all destroyed. Then said the Jews unto him, thou art not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Are you sitting here? Your little 50-year-old self going to try to tell us? Not as a 50-year-old self. Your 50-year-old demon-possessed, half-breed. Are you going to come to us? And, and not, as a, not just demon-possessed and half -breed. Breed, but born of fornication self gonna come and tell us that you talk to our father Abraham Jesus answers them in verse 58 my Lord Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you before Abraham was I am. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this place uh, that before Abraham, in properly translated, before Abraham ever was, uh, if you want, before Abraham ever began to begin, uh, before Abraham ever was conceived, uh, I just am. Uh, you need to understand, and we've repeated this to you before, that the God we serve uh, has already completed in the past what he will do in the future while he performs it in the present. Travis, he's at the start of the race. Uh, he's at the end of the race while he runs the race uh, he's standing up on the tee about to tee off uh, at the same time he's putting for birdie uh, while he walks the green uh, I need you to understand uh, that the God you serve uh, is everywhere all the time uh, he's in the past the present and the future all at the same time uh, he already knows uh, the end to this story and he's wondering when will you jump in uh, and get on this ark of safety because he's heading and taking us home. It's an amazing thing. Because in this moment, Jesus is helping them to unsend something really, 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 really. Because he says, he says this. He says, before Abraham ever was, I am. Now one thing those leaders knew was the phrase, ego a me. <laughs> they knew ego a me. <laughs> they knew I am. They knew I am was a direct reference to the God of heaven. They knew that I am took them all the way back to the burning bush when Moses showed up. And I love that story because Moses finds the bush, Mr. Principal, on the backside of the desert. Oh, man. Uh, it's amazing because Moses goes from the backside of the desert to one day he gets to see the backside of God. Um, it's an incredible story because in that moment, he comes before the burning bush and the bush is burning. The bush is burning, 
but it's not burning up. The bush is on fire, but it's not being consumed. There's a bunch of crackling going on, but the bush is not burning away. You need to understand in that moment, it drew his attention in. And the closer he got, as he gets close, he hears a voice from the bush. Oh, man. Here's a voice from the fire that is burning the bush but not burning it up saying take off your shoes uh, for the ground you are standing on is holy ground now if that's not enough God tells him I want you to get my people up uh, and I want you to lead them out of uh, uh, Egypt and I want you to lead them to the promised land uh, and then Moses asked the question uh, well you know when I go you say you're the God of heaven but when I go to the people whom shall I say sent me <laughs> And he says, tell them, I am that I am. Man, come on, that ain't no title. He says, I am that I am. In other words, in the Hebrew language, he is emphatically telling him, if they ask you who sent you, tell them it's none of their business. Woo! That in essence, if you want to know who I am, then take a look in your cupboards and see the food in there and you will see the I am. When you see the rain falling and the sun shining, that's the I am. When you get up in the morning with breath in your body, clothed in your right mind, that is the I am. And you need to understand today that in essence, I don't answer to you, you answer to me. Incredible story because for the Israelites, Abraham was not just dead in the sense of asleep. Listen to me. Yes, Abraham was dead. Abraham was asleep in his grave when they make this statement. Right? It's absolutely true. But when Jesus talks about those who believe in him, will never die. The proper understanding of that Greek expression is actually not that you will never go to sleep in the grave, huh? but that your end, if you would, or, 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 or your existence will not end in death. In other words, you may die the first death, but when you die in the Lord, Sister Greg, you don't die the second death. <laughs> oh man, you, you, you may die, you may, you may be laid to rest. There's a lot of saints we laid to rest last year and we laid them to rest. They are sleeping uh, in the grave awaiting that great sound when the Lord shall descend with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. But listen to me, here's where Abraham was dead in a worse sense, in that those of his descendants refused to do the works of Abraham to the extent that Abraham was dead in them. Oh, it's interesting because when we relate this to Jesus Christ, there are some of you even sitting here today and watching all online where you have to beg the question, when it comes to Jesus Christ living in you, is have you crucified the Jesus in you? Is Jesus dead in you? It's interesting because I take us, they can play me something, but I take us to, I take us to that resurrection morning. I take us to Jesus being led to the grave. Now we know he was 100% human, but he was also 100% God. Humans die, God does not. <laughs> Hence, on his way to the grave, as my great uh, professor would put it, in essence, uh, they were toting a body to the grave. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah while divinity walked behind it. <laughs> oh, Lord. That in essence, when they get inside of the grave, divinity is waiting to climb back inside of humanity. <laughs> because in essence, uh, you need to understand that even in that moment, as hot as it is in that part of the world, you, know, you need to understand, they would very quickly bury you 
because they were afraid that your body would begin quickly decaying and would begin to stink. So what they would do is they would embalm you real fast. And embalming was not like today. They run all the stuff to your veins. Embalming simply meant they would wrap you up in a bunch of spices and everything else. And they were going to wrap you up tight to make sure that when your body did begin to decay, you didn't stink. Now, here's the thing. The problem with Jesus was he that had never sinned need not decay in the grave. Uh -huh. Not just that, not just that, but understand this, uh, that David had already predicted that his body would not see corruption. Hence, uh, hence, when divinity is sitting inside of the tomb uh, with Jesus, there is no possibility of decaying uh, because things don't die when God is in the midst. Oh, Lord help us. I, I need you to understand, even when you look at the story, his crowning act, his crowning miracle when he was down on here on earth was when he raised Lazarus from the dead. That is considered to be Jesus' greatest miracle while he was here on earth. He raised a man from the dead that had been dead for four days. Ellen White says that the primary reason that Jesus did not go right away to deliver Lazarus was because Lazarus could not die if Jesus was present. And I need you to understand uh, that if Jesus is living inside of you, uh, no, you will never die the second death. Uh, yes, you may be laid in the grave, uh, but Jesus uh, has resurrection power and he will bring you forth from the grave. Uh, you don't know what tomorrow brings. Uh, we don't know if the pandemic will take you out, if an accident will take you out. Now in this country, you don't know if a straight bullet will take you out, but you can be certain of this, that if you die in the Lord, uh, that on that great morning uh, you will have resurrection power because Jesus is inside of you uh, you have nothing to fear when that God comes down uh, with that great shout uh, and the corruptible shall put on incorruption and the mortal shall put on immortality so long as you die in the Lord you will live forever Abraham was dead inside of the nation of Israel because they rejected the teachings that Abraham believed in. They rejected the truth. They rejected Christ. And if you reject Christ, your end will be the same. Listen, all was spent, your heads are bowed, your eyes are closed. There's somebody here today that just needs to accept Christ the way, the truth, and the life. Somebody here today needs to accept the way, the truth, and the life. Come on now. There's somebody here that needs to give their heart to Jesus and say, I surrender all. I don't want to keep you long. Just stand to your feet. Come on, sing something with me if you would. And uh, we want to invite you just to stand where you are. Just stand on your feet and say, I want to surrender. I want to be baptized. I know we got a lot of members here, but perhaps there's somebody even online huh, that is watching huh, and needs to stand up for Jesus. We invite you wherever you are all over the globe. Huh, we invite you to stand to your feet. Huh. Get up on your feet where you are in your house. God bless you, young man. Get up on your feet wherever you are. Whether you are in Canada, whether you are in, if you would, Kenya, whether you are in uh, Antigua, whether you're in Guyana, whether you're in Trinidad and Tobago, whether you're in the United States, even here uh, in Bermuda, whether or not you're in Trinidad or Tobago, listen, I need you to get up uh, and say, I believe in the truth. Uh, I understand uh, that when the truth uh, has set me free, that I'm free indeed, uh, and I want to be free from the burden of sin there is power there is power there is wonder working power in the man we call Jesus Christ oh if you want to be saved you want to be a part of that team stand up stand up where you are get on your feet wherever you are get up in your pajamas stand up for Jesus get up out of the bed tell Jesus come on put that food down put the waffles down put the pancakes down stand up for Jesus and tell him today that in 2022 you're going to serve him with your whole heart give everything to him heads are bowed your eyes are closed spirit of the living God indeed Abraham is dead 
but Jesus is alive. And because Jesus is alive, Abraham will live again. Because Jesus is alive, we got men like Moses and Elijah and Enoch that are already in heaven. Because of Jesus, there's a multitude up there in glory that once lived on earth. Because of Jesus, there are 24 humans that have been promoted to be elders uh, that sit around the throne and worship the king of king all day every day and today there are some people standing up all over the world maybe you can't stand i invite you to raise your hand i know we got a lot of people that watch us in the nursing home just raise your hand in the nursing home raise your hand up if you can't get up raise your hand and tell jesus tell the way the truth and the life that you are going to follow him in 20 and 22. he says to you today though your sins be as scarlet up he will wash you white as snow understand today Abraham is dead but Jesus need not be dead inside of you Jesus has resurrection power oh, Father we place these lives into your hands we place them in your hands and we ask that you would bind them close to you until the day that you are seen coming in the clouds of glory. May everyone that's here, may everyone that's here be ready to see you when you come. I know, Lord, it's early in the year, but it's always good for the saints of God who have already made this decision to stand for Jesus Christ. And so I want to ask all of you in God's house, all of you that have already committed to him, I just want to say, I want to stand in recommitment. I want you to get on your feet right now. Stand right up. Stand up right now. If you want to say, God, I'm, I'm recommitting myself to you in 2022. I'm going to study your word so that when you speak to me, I know your voice. I understand your language. That the words of scripture will become my native tongue. If that's you, I want you just to stand to your feet. Recommit yourself. Tell God that I'm still on this old ship of Zion and I have no plans of going anywhere else. Stand up even now and tell God that you are on the battlefield for your Lord. Those of you online, stand up. Stand up all over the United States. Stand up in the Caribbean. Stand up if you would in Africa. Stand up right now and tell God that I'm in this and I'm in this with you and I refuse after all this time to give up on the man I call my Lord and Savior. Father in heaven, we ask your blessing upon your people. Fill them with power, wonder working power transform them from within we pray that after all is said and done you will be able to place a little bit of heaven inside of us <laughs> that we may be able to go to heaven and live throughout the ceaseless ages of eternity with you this is our prayer we pray in Jesus name let the redeemed of the Lord say amen. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. Come on, someone turn to your neighbor and say neighbor. Come on, say neighbor. Abraham is dead, but Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Come on, come on, say he lives. Somebody believes that he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Oh, how many of you believe that today? Somebody shout hallelujah in this place. Uh, God bless you. God bless you.
Praise the Lord. Our closing hymn this morning is Great is Thy Faithfulness. What a word, what a word this morning from Pastor David Steed. Thank you. Thank you. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh God, my Father. Uh, my hymnal this time. We'll sing all three stanzas. for the benediction. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.
seated until ushered out. Here we go. Just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. wanna praise you forever and ever and ever for all you've done done for me blessings and glory and honor they all Blessings and glory and honor and honor they all belong to you. Blessings, blessings and glory and honor they all belong. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for blessing. 